And we're off. Yeah, the sound yeah. of domestic abuse. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Hey. Thanks for having me back. Simon yeah, Rex back in the building. Woo. Right, baby. Is this the third one I did? Third one. I think it is. Holy shit. Wow. You had a solo, then you had a Halloween, and yep. now oh, here. That's right. Yeah, the Halloween that's right. was a here classic. We mm -hmm. Oh, we got the picture of it right there. We got Simon in the. Oh, oh yeah. Where? where? The, the cartoon. Oh, You're yeah. Superman. And we're the ambiguously oh, gay man, duo. Oh, that's so Which I think cool. put us on Robert Smigel's radar. That's right. You got to right. get him back on with the insult dog versus Winnie. Ooh, Triumph versus Winnie. I got to just work with Smigel recently. He reached out, which was such an honor to do a live Adam Sandler song because Adam wouldn't couldn't do it or it was too big to do it. And I performed one of his rap songs with Smigel doing Triumph back and forth. And I had like memorized the song. We did it live at a... Was the place in L.A. the comedy place uh, store? No, like Improv? Uh, one, uh, comedy uh, magic club. The one on La, La Cienega. A anyway, Laugh Factory. Nah, it's like a place they do live shows. Anyway, D Dynasty type. I got to perform with Triumph. Oh, that okay. was fucking cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. For yeah. me to poop on. Yeah, he's that was amazing. And Smuggles a man, nice. dude. Yeah. That was cool. I don't know if you could do half of his. Uh, I mean, he would just go call everybody a virgin at Comic Con. Yeah, he could do it. All right. He's still doing it. Oh, good. Okay. He's yeah, he's still doing it. A lot of fat. We did jokes. it. We did it. Yeah, it's great. Big yeah. fan. Don't, if you ever want to see some shit you can't do, is it Jumbo the Clown? What's that? Oh, don't even pull it up. I mean, really? I might have the name wrong, but he was just like an offensive clown. If you want to see some oh, shit you wow. really can't do, John Wayne Gacy the clown. That guy, <laughs> that guy was doing some cutting edge shit. Oh, yeah. Well, Were you, wait, you guys are, oh, was John Wayne Gacy, Yucko. was that the 70s? Yucko the clown. Who was he? The mur New York murderer? When was it? He was 80s? Look it up. That's back when serial killers were sexy. Like, they were like <laughs> I don't know if he was sexy. They could get away with. Oh, he wasn't sexy. You're right. Who was the hot one that murdered people? Ted with Bundy. The people. Ted like, Bundy. Yes. Oh yeah. He's but not he's like sexy. overrated, kind of. Yeah. For Ted a killer, Bundy. he's hot. For a killer, he's attractive, yeah. I guess. And he did his own court case, which is kind of sexy. Yeah. Oh well, he was his own uh, lawyer. Yeah. If Unhinged is your type, he he had a thing going. Right. Right. And he escaped from prison. Pretty impressive. Crafty. I like him. Wait, he escaped from prison? Oh, yeah. yeah but Holy he, shit. But they got him. Yeah, by the way, like, he That's was in the woods or something. He, he was so good, he could just charm you. And yeah. Like, he is, yeah. He's in, like, a prison outfit. He's like, no, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, These oh, aren't maybe. the droids you're looking when people for. Lie, <laughs> that kind of yeah. shit. When people lie to your face that convincingly, you're just yeah. like, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was no Google. So, like, he would just kill a bunch of people in Utah and then take a bus to Florida, and he was just back uh, back on the scene. And t uh, what's his name? <laughs> back on the scene. Who's <laughs> the <laughs> one that <laughs> sex zombies? That guy? Uh, Who's that, Dahmer? Dahmer kind of looks like a leading man in that picture. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, my Dahmer joke. The show, did you watch the show on Netflix? No. Oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty creepy, well done. Right? Super creepy, but uh, it's set in the 80s. So at one point, they bring Jeffrey Dahmer's dad into the police station. They're like, We got crazy news. Your son is gay. He's a serial killer, and he's a cannibal. And the dad's like, He's gay? <laughs> <laughs> I had a Ted Bundy one, I think, about how in the dock, they were like, The cop came on. He was like, uh, that, guy, that guy's problem. He was a narcissist. I was like, that was his only problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah was, you know, you know, Bin Laden's problem: never punctual, never uh, <laughs> always late. No, but it's it's uh, those serial killer docs, man. They're did you watch the Pete Rose one yet? No, uh, it's good. Not tonight. About, it's tonight I'm watching it. Why? What's uh, this, it's all about the gambling? How he fixed everything? And just he's a fucking lunatic, but he's yeah. so for kind of a Neanderthal meathead, just unbelievable hitter. He's he's. It's a fascinating story. Charming. Did they allow him back into the Hall of Fame? What's the end no. result? No. It is funny that they're like, he's not in for gambling. They're like, well, he did fuck a minor, too. Like, just uh, use the minor and you don't sound as bad. <laughs> minor league. Yeah. Because yeah. Ty Cobb, I think, pushed his wife down a flight of stairs. Yeah. And and they're like, you know, he's in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, at a certain point, you know. Well, his wife was of age. He pushed her. <laughs> so it was fine. Uh, yeah. well, what is it now? What is it with serial killers and the three names? Is it because we identify them as three names, or is it just a coincidence? You got to find this comic because he had a great bit on it. I forgot his name, and I feel oh, like, I saw the, that. he had the bit about how uh, they use the three names. He goes, and I think it's because they're in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, the mom. Uh, wait, yeah, yeah, that's funny. Thomas Matthew Crooks, yeah. get down here. You got to find John his name. I want to. I want to credit yeah. him too. We got if you could find that. That was scary. That's a good. That's such that. a good angle. We need a new serial killer. Or like a mash. It's been a while, right? We, I feel like we need a, something to. 
I bet we've had them, and we just don't know it. There's so many, they kind of go under the radar now. I saw this thing recently about the, uh, there's like an FBI case. They're doing a, a thing on, there's so many serial killers that are truckers because they can just drive around and uh. kill someone, and that there's a bunch out right now that they're like, got a tail on or whatever they call it, where they, and there's a bunch of serial killers who are truck drivers who just do it all around the country, and they're hard to get. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? They listen to our podcast. They yeah. press pause. They strangle a hooker. They uh -huh. get back in the car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they need pods for the long drive. That's true. They pop on us, a little Rogan. <laughs> yeah. They kill Tony. Hey, Theo Vaughn's got <laughs> Trump. <laughs> kill a hooker, kill Tony. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, we were just talking about Theo getting Trump on. That's a pretty crazy thing. That's crazy. I mean, what the fuck? And then I was saying, uh, we were talking about this before you got here. I don't trust people who don't laugh. Have you ever heard Trump laugh? This is a brilliant observation. I've never heard him. What's his laugh sound like? And and it's, and it's weird. Yeah, uh -huh. he doesn't laugh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, I can't he doesn't do it. laugh. You got to pull up the clip of Artie Lang and Howard Stern. Uh, I think he's on Seth Meyers telling the story already, but it's like. Uh, it's the story of roasting Trump and how he like kind of couldn't take it. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. When it's really. Sitting, oh yeah, he's just sitting there like this. He's like, I'm gonna become the president now. Like, yeah. Getting roasted in the audience when uh, it was like Obama was roasting him, right? Yeah, he didn't like yeah. that either. Yeah. Where is he? Uh, he I don't know where right. it is. This might be it. We have uh, thousands of hours of footage of him from over decades, and I, I can't yeah, picture no, I him think laughing. You got it. R.D. Lang, rest in peace. He's alive. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I saw his sister the other night, and uh, we, I, I hope we we can get him back on at some point. I'd love to He's get him on. He's the best. I love him. <laughs> yeah, go go forward. He tells the Trump. This is it. He knew to make me tell the joke in a tiny little area where he'd feel trapped. Right. So uh, yeah, Trump comes in and goes, Artie was the best. He was the funniest. He was the funniest. And then Howard made me tell the joke, and then uh, I was a loser. And this is, I don't know if we have video evidence of this, because it's so right. fascinating to watch how quickly his opinion changes on you. Let's take a look. Uh, what was but, your best joke? He Go ahead. was the funniest. In, let, me hear two of his, let me hear two of the jokes. You know, there's talk about uh, some Donald financial problems in Atlantic City, and I said that Donald took his uh, daughter uh, for a drive through Atlantic City and said, someday, honey, your name will be at the top of all these buildings. That's if you marry a guy named Borgata. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> he, had to, he had to bring this crap up. No, you brought it up. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he was terrible. He did a lousy job. Yeah. I'm a loyal person. Right. I was nice to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> It hits me. I, Wait I a say, second, though. It, it's a joke. I don't care. I don't take jokes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, how there you that's go. a great fucking wow. clip, though, isn't it? I think of that bad. every time. Uh, and he got roasted on Comedy Central, too. Why do you keep a green to yeah, roast? Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, I haven't heard Biden laugh either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but to laugh, you really have to know what's going on. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's He's just not. Right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. Uh, now, Kamala, I've only heard laugh. Yeah. I've never heard her she say She laughs anything. too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, forced laugh. I don't know. <clears throat> Somebody said she's a wine mom, which is a perfect, you know, like, she's she's laughing too much, and then she won't talk later because she's too drunk. Somebody nailed it. I can't remember mm -hmm. who that was. Bodega Cat, baby. Oh, dude, we're, we're, the new Congrats. bottle is coming soon. We, we, I mean, we have it already, I think, but we had a shipping issue today. But Bodega Cat, we're, we're doing it, man. It's weird how shipments are on land and cargoes at sea. Just a little oh, those weird oh, I never thought of that. Holy shit. Wow, that's some, good stuff. Some dyslexic person. Like brain dropping stuff. Yeah. Stuff right there. That's, <laughs> that's the new car parkway. Yeah, right. Right. Dri and, you drive on a right, parkway, you right. park in a driveway. And, and I was sending you guys on our text thread those, like, the origin of the ep uh, epidemiologist, what the epitome, the, uh, ep ep the epititis. Epidermis. Epidermis. What's uh, the word for the origin of words? Etymology. Etymology of all the terms from England of, like, you know, flash in the pan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that Instagram page. Well, Norman turned me on to that guy, Cody Tucker. Cody Tucker. Yeah. Who's that? He's oh, just, he played him before. He just he just is like he'll tell you the origin of words oh, like that yeah. on and that shit's fascinating. It all comes from England, like prison England. Shit. Yeah, a lot of war stuff, a lot of nautical stuff. Yeah, man. Break the ice. 
Break the, what was that? Oh, the that's, not, that's, that's ship when thing. a ship show up with the cargo and they, they got to break the ice to get them in because they're like, finally, some more supplies. Uh, break the ice. Let those fuckers drop those diapers off. Yeah, it started with uh, pushing the envelope is how we started with it. Wait, what's that? I I, for, I sent it to you guys. It's it's out there somewhere. You want to find Push it? Pushing the envelope. I think it was something with airplanes, like the pilot had to push the envelope to with the, co oh, with the right. cocaine in it to this boss or something. What is this here? Oh, I thought it was the yoke. The yoke was the on. I love how Google's now AI, right? Oh yeah, I know, right? Damn, this is a good flavor. Holy shit! I've been eating. I what ate half that. Oh, I'm gonna have one. This is, is like a version of the all dress. Because I said I like all dress. Is that why you did? You fucking it's what a thought. You consider it, motherfucker, yeah. Matt. Clancy's. All, all dress is my favorite potato chip. Winnie, you can't have any. You know, in Europe, you go to those. They got those crazy chips in Europe flavors in Asia. Oh yeah, tomato crisps. Oh yeah, that's your, yeah. You guys like Europe? That welcome to my I'm podcast. Going, I'm going. <laughs> when did this come out? What a stupid question. You guys question. like Europe? <laughs> <laughs> in September? I'm going in three days. Where are you going? London. Ooh, that's Europe. Uh, where else am I going? Belfast, that's Dublin, Europe. Paris, Amsterdam, Whoa. Copenhagen, Europe. Oslo, and Stockholm. That's Europe. Yeah. Shows in all of them, baby. That's, oh, amazing, dude. That's great. That's yeah, a hell of a can't run. wait. Yeah. yeah and so Frank jokes. House. That was a hot ticket. That was tough. You got one? I, I literally, I, I, did, I couldn't get tickets. It's sold out. I'm like, sold out six weeks. What is this, fucking Taylor Swift? I, <laughs> it's insane that I'm having to call in favors to get into the Anne Frank house. Yep. So I, I put an Instagram story. I'm like, didn't know it was such a hot ticket. Any help would be appreciated. The Jewish mafia starts hitting Whoa. me up. What? Jessica Seinfeld's like, let me know what I can do to Whoa. help. Schumer DMs me. Like, all these Jews wow. are like, I got you. And I and I and someone said, wait till Tuesday. They put up new tickets, and I waited, and I got them. Oh, nice! Wow. I remember I went by there, and I tried to go in, but it was the I couldn't. I just walked by to, and I couldn't get in, so I just looked at the exterior of the building, and I just was like, like Chevy Chase in vacation at yeah. the Grand Canyon, like three nods, and then I left. So yeah. I saw the house that she hid in. That scared little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need is to see the house, because the attic is it's. A little lackluster. Yeah. It's not much I'm going I'm sure she on. was disappointed, too. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, a little more room. Would have been nice. Yeah. No Imagine article. that. No Instagram. No Twitter. What did she do in there? Yeah. yeah. I guess cried and screamed. She wrote. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. yeah I guess so. <laughs> Good point. But, uh, <laughs> Yo, yeah, Europe, man. Van Gogh Museum, too. I got tickets. So I'm, nice. I'm, I'm going to try to do a bang, bang. Out one day in Amsterdam. It's so annoying. I got a few in others. Yeah, Amsterdam, there's not enough want. time. I, and you're not a stoner, so you're not going to go do all that. Don't do all that, cause I I try. I'm not a stoner either, and I was like, let me get weed. It's Amsterdam, and it ruined my whole trip. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? What? Why are we not stoners? Uh, we're we're mental. We're we're all up we're in here. Our heads. Yeah. I think it heightens the doubts. Yeah. yeah that's exactly the, right. That's why I like drinking it. Fucking yeah, shuts up. Those that's boys. exactly right. I've been a stoner my whole life. I'm in ten months now, no weed, cause I go back and forth, and uh, I notice when I'm not on weed, the difference in my confidence and every really? socially. Oh my god. You when I'm like stoned, a, I doubt everything. It's just but you seem like a confident guy. I, I know. It, I, now that I know you, I know you have like a ton of anxiety. Yeah, I'm a fucking mess. But like yeah. I, uh, I, I notice the weed really makes me like antisocial like not i just want to hibernate and not socialize and i'm trying to be social which is uh we were talking about eye contact's hard i can't order a burrito I, I can't it's so hard for me to make eye contact with a barista uh-huh i can't look at someone Why? in the i don't know or any i i is there beneath you i don't know it's not <laughs> that at all i, I, I you I hollywood know. scumbag <laughs> i can't i don't know it's a weird thing like i'm uh, i can't explain it i feel like uh a fraud or something. I feel like I, uh, they're gonna know I'm full of shit. I don't I think even, it even like with you're the just high. I think that's just, a high. Maybe thing. it's. I don't think because normally you just you look at a person, right? I feel yeah. like the, it's the weed. Remember going to Seven Eleven as a kid? You're like they know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. have no idea. They're never oh thinking God. about you. You're like a 14 year old idiot. They don't give a shit. My friend and I were so high once at home, and my dad knew, and he came in and he just handed a pamphlet on cigarettes uh. smoking. <laughs> it was the most passive aggressive way to be like I like he didn't know it was weed. What are you? What is Oh, what is this? What uh, is this? Is this a shit, shit moment? I hope not. Okay. What kind of dog is this. that? She's a pug with a hint of Chihuahua. Okay. Ooh. That's why the Chihuahua makes her rude. The pugs are so friendly, but she's you know. How old is she again? Seventeen. Wow. She has the body of a sixteen-year-old. Dude, did I say that on the last one? <laughs> she, dude, we uh, reuse it. <laughs> I had her on the morning show segment in Baltimore, and then I'm walking in the comedy club there, and there's a line for people to get in outside, and as I'm walking around, everyone goes, "Winnie!" Uh, oh, that's awesome. Winnie! <laughs> that's awesome. I got to get her like a little scarf and sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hollywood. Yeah, I like she always <laughs> this way. She faces Mecca. I love, 
<laughs> Always. Dude, you're we haven't we haven't even mentioned this, but you're in a new you're in yeah. so many new movies. Yeah, yeah. But you're just in a new one with Pacino. Oh Whoa. yeah. Vince Vaughn. I sent you some remember I sent you a still photo. Yeah. You were like, Oh, I'm on mushrooms in Paraguay or something. And that's <laughs> the director of who wrote True Detective. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Nick, Nick that guy's a lot of Yeah, Nick Pizzolato. Um, I'm a huge fan of True Detective. That's kind of I remember when that came out like ten years ago, I was like, Oh, Matthew McConaughey's my favorite actor now? What's going on? Like, that was like a point in Dallas. television. He had just yeah. exactly that's when kind of T V started to not eclipse film but get as good. Oh yeah. You know, when you saw him and Woody Harrelson that show was just like holy shit this is incredible michelle monahan yeah 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 Howdy. she was actually supposed to be in this one but then she got that new show what's the show called on hbo where they go to the different really islands good, dude what's the new show Bad monkey oh is it good have you I'm, seen it i'm two in oh really and i'm loving it With okay so, yeah it's it's like carl hiasen book so it's like it's like florida is that japanese noir. no he's like a it's like a he's like a florida noir type oh wow floor oh. Flo- Flo- yeah. Uh, but he's like Vince Vaughn being like a really fun. So director. Vince is kind of wow. well. I didn't know that Vince was having a quote unquote comeback because I didn't think he went anywhere. I'm like, oh, he's on either. Curb. He's on it, but like, but he didn't get the bit. meaty roles that we're used to him. Getting. Right. I mean, how do you stay on top that long? Exactly. You're hot. I mean, so he. Uh, he's a comedy I, guy. They he's work a comedy a guy. Kind of comedies. He's a comedy guy, but he's uh, an amazing dramatic actor. So it was funny. I just did this really movie is. with him and Pacino and uh, Shane Gillis. I got Shane in it. Whoa. Yeah, dude. Shane did a little cameo. I was on his couch i was in austin on his couch reading the script and it was written for norm mcdonald obviously he passed away so i was like dude you you want to do this movie with me and pacino and vince vaughn and he's like duh we have the same manager he did a, he did it wow um, so that was awesome and he had to oh i'm not gonna say anything i'll let it be he, he did great uh but anyway um it was weird doing a movie with vince vaughn that's not a comedy because if it's basically the movie is like true detective but a film there's no comedy and i was like hoping to zing and zang with them but it's like heavy dramatic acting and vince is so fucking good man he's because he's got a darkness under there like sure. most yeah. funny people but he did that movie years ago remember that one called return to paradise with joaquin phoenix i never, oh, I never saw, saw it in it's like it's like a it's like a midnight express type um, that movie, movie's awesome. Drugs, they get arrested. He's Vaughn is fucking dude. He's got, heavyweight in no, it. He's really, a, dude. He's a smart motherfucker, man, and he's just a good dude. And we we had a blast on set because you know ninety. He's funny. Eight percent of the days doing this, hanging out. Yeah. But uh, it, yeah, he brought it, man. It was really cool to work with him. And and, and uh, working with Al Pacino was just surreal. You're yeah. just looking at him, you're like, that's Sonny Corleone under there. Wow. He looks like an old, like wizard. And you're looking yeah. at him, you're like, that's Carlito. That's wait, that's that's fucking Serpico. Code, that's Scarface. You start and you're like wow. trying to remember your lines, and you're looking at him, and it's you're trying to compartmentalize. It was it was intense, and then after a few days, you're like, oh, he's just a person, but he's on Mount Rushmore of like the living legend. Oh yeah, you know, little guy, right? Yeah, he's he's a little guy, but he's still got the curiosity. He's still sharp. He's got to be like mid eighties, right? Yeah, eighty four. He wow. turned eighty four on set. It was really sweet. We had a uh, cake for him, saying happy birthday. He did a whole speech. Just got a lady pregnant. Yeah, you know he has a baby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, so they had the baby, and the baby's uh, like nine months old now. And that's a, wow. that's a lot. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah, Damn. yeah. I, I, I he's never been married. I, I, it, wow. What was funny too is that Hero. he's so sweet. He he uh, he's 84, so he would forget that he told you this story yesterday. Oh, okay. Say, but you don't want to be like, hey Al, you told me this. You should yesterday. run for president. So he'd say the same. <laughs> he'd say the same thing on the time, and it's like watching a rerun of your favorite sitcom. Like he's still telling the same story. Right. And, at least Pacino, uh, you gotta just let him. You're go. like, oh no way. Really? Uh, you know, every day. You know, hoo ha. We, we remember. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. good. Uh, but yeah, he was a sweetheart. And we went to see Ali Wong. And oh. uh, he had, uh, and so, funny moment. He's like, Simon, because we stayed at the Win and she was playing at the Win. So he's like, let's go see some comedy. So he took me with him. I'm sitting next to him the whole night next to him watching Ali Wong as she's screaming about her vagina. Yeah. And uh, he was, uh, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, hey, man, when, when was the last time you saw stand up comedy? And he goes, 35 years ago. Wow. And I go, who? Uh, And he said, Rodney Dangerfield. (laughs) I was like, dude, are you serious? And then it was a cool moment. We're leaving like his security teams taking us like out the back. And it's literally like one of those moments out of a movie. So Allie opens her door and uh, she's like, Simon. And Al had walked ahead of me. So I was caught in this moment of like, I don't want to keep him waiting, but I got to say hi to her. And I see him like waiting for me. And I'm like, does he want to talk to her? I don't want to be like, hey, come meet, you know. So she's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm just here shooting a movie. And then I feel him walk up and he 
her jaw hits the floor. Yeah. She doesn't know Pacino's in the building. Holy And he shit. starts praising her about beef, her show, for five minutes. And she's just looking at him, looking at me like, what is going on? And he was so sweet. And he just like praised how much he loved the show. And uh, as like we leave, she's like, what the fuck? It was a cool moment. Oh, wow. that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was Fucking cool. Pacino, Did you get the photo? She... No, we didn't get a photo, a but tough it really one. happened. You want that photo, but you don't I want to ask. It's a I, I, tough well, spot. It's fun. You said it too. I never asked him yeah. for a photo because then you're immediately a fan. And that's I wanted true. to st st think I'm on, not on his level, but like one of him, you know. But he so I never die. asked for a photo. If he dies, though, I mean, he, he's going to forget the photo a, a minute later anyway. You just say that. He's he's never say, look, I'm not a fan, just you might die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you say it. Exactly. But yeah, that was cool. So yeah, it's called Easy's Waltz. But I got a movie that's out now by the time this airs uh comes uh, it's out you're it's in so many movies right now yeah, yeah this cooking. one this one is uh, uh called blink twice zoe kravitz directed it. it's with channing tatum great cast and um and uh it's a movie and <laughs> and then another one called greedy people with jo jo yes. joseph gordon levitt tim blake nelson uh some oh, other cool people jim gaffigan's he, in it oh nice i feel like uh, tim blake nelson like he's not enough stuff i feel like he's always really he's, good right he's awesome man i got oh brother where art though oh, yeah he's awesome that was awesome yeah he was uh, great as uh what's it called billy the kid Oh, oh uh, yeah. in, in uh, what, what's what, it called? It's called the Old Cold Henry. One. Old Henry. That movie. That okay, awesome. so it's funny you say that because I, I saw that else. on a plane. That's a wreck. Uh, Old Henry. Never, never heard saw, of it. I never, never. You wrecked this. I never dude, saw this. Shane wrecked it to me, and I watched it. It's incredible movie, and I saw it on a plane. I'm like, what is this movie? I've never heard of it. And the director's name was Potsy. I can't remember his last name right now. Anyway, Potsy did an amazing job in that movie. So when Greedy People was presented to me, they're like, it's the guy who did Old Henry. I'm like, I'm in. Oh, I love that movie. Movie. Great, that's a movie. great wreck. Um, I, was, I was thinking the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, oh that's yeah, a good one. Well, he's that's, great in that too. That was a, that he's was awesome. Fun. No, the guy's a legend. Oh, uh, he's a three, a three named serial killer. That's right. Um, now let so me ask Joseph you. Gordon Levitt. Yeah. What's it like going to walk around Vegas with Pacino? Yeah, so, you got to feel like a boss. Well, it was more. He kind of hibernated in his villa, and me and Vince would walk around. And I, I've never seen a celebrity handle fans better than Vince. Me and Shane were were marveling in how he is that a way word marveling yeah, yeah. we were Marvel reveling we were revealing mm -hmm. we were blown away by how vince handled fans because he's six foot he's taller than you he's like yeah. six five yeah can't miss him and, and imagine vegas it's like middle america drunk right it, it, he's just gonna get attacked but by the time somebody recognizes him, he sees it and he goes up to them and starts talking to them before they could even be like, hey, and he gives them a spiel, does, does a bit, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, he's like spins off and they're just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. And he like somehow avoids it by going into the fire. Like, uh -huh. and, and, Alpha. And, and me, yeah, it's insane. And, and me and Shane were just watching him work and we're like, this is incredible. Like, uh, you know, me and Shane are like trying to hide, like no one even <laughs> cares about us. It's Vince Vaughn, but he handled it's so crazy and uh yeah he's he's that dude wow yeah oh yeah i'm a i'm a fan out of the gate i mean when i saw him in swingers dude, 30 yeah. years ago oh, you know, so you know how hard it was for me in vegas for six weeks with him to never once go vegas baby oh. <laughs> i never did it once that's money i never did it my once. brother had that poster up when he was a kid it was just on his, oh, with the over, martini over his bed yeah. no oh. no no the one it was like a photograph but it was a different version it was them in the car and it just said vegas baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then he did made which was yes. another vegas made was yeah. fun though that was fun what's that p diddy yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, P. Diddy. He put him on the uh, wish list of like all time guests. Yeah, P. Diddy. Get him on yeah. there. <laughs> no, Vince Vaughn would be fun as hell. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, he's the best, man. Anyway, so circling back, I think he's have. So uh, uh, Nick Pizzolato wrote this movie for Vince, and he was looking for someone to play his brother for a couple years. The movie was kind of just uh, written and done for Vince, and uh, he saw Red Rocket, and he goes, That's Vince's brother. Whoa. And so he just wow. put me in the movie. So. It was like I didn't even have to audition. He just thought, oh. thought I, I was just so you know rambling fast. He's like he could play Vince's brother. That's the best. Is, it, yeah. is this like going to be in theaters or? Oh yeah, or I'm what? sure. Well, you never know, but I'm, I imagine a there fucking it is. movie with those. Guys. Yeah, there it is. So Michelle Monaghan was supposed to be in it, as you see there, but um, Kate Mara is in it instead, uh -huh. and uh, she was so sweet um, because because Michelle Monaghan got what's that show? White Lotus. Uh. So she went off to do White Lotus, so uh, she couldn't do the movie. Wait, that's how old this was shooting back? We shot this, uh, we, shift, we wrapped three months ago. We oh, finished. so there's a yeah. new White Lotus. Yeah, they're saying. shooting it right now in Thailand or something. Ooh. 
Ooh. So I understand her like she uh, probably had to choose between the two. It's like, ooh, a De Niro, I mean a Pacino movie yeah. or Thailand for I know. three months. Stav and I always talk about that because I guess back in the day, the actor William Peterson was offered Platoon mm. and he was just like, eh, and he did some shitty movie in LA instead. I think he was like, I could bang models in LA yeah. or I could get yelled at by Oliver Stone yeah. in Vietnam. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, which one do you go with? Yeah. And uh, it's like, eh, he probably made the right choice for him. He's still <laughs> doing, he seems mentally better than Sheen. That's a good point. So Charlie Sheen told me uh, that. Um, like you, you guys. Yeah. Oh, wait, where is it? Oh, yeah, that's is that, Shane. That's is that Shane. Pizzolatto? That's me, Pizzolatto, and Shane Gillis. That's cool. Good name for R. Kelly. Um, Pizzolatto. <laughs> Peterson did make fucking Manhunter, though. That's a sick movie. Oh, Wait, who yeah. made it? He was in Manhunter. The oh, yeah. The man movie. That's that a great show. Fuck. Uh, so I was going to say that uh, um, uh, Charlie Sheen told me that Oliver Stone, there was a guy on set on Platoon who was a real Vietnam veteran that was there to say, no, this is, you know, uh, to make sure things were authentic. Like the Nick Nolte Tropic Thunder guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Which was probably based off this dude. Whoa. So he was a real vet who was there and he was a tough motherfucker and he was like making sure things were authentic. And I guess he and and Oliver Stone really didn't get along because I got Oliver's movie and this guy's probably trying. You can only imagine the shit that went on. So by the end, I guess the last day of the movie, movie uh they got in a fist fight Whoa. what and he said that oliver stone beat his ass what in front of everybody beat up the, vet? the vietnam vet is there wow. any is there any record of this, this no is crazy. no this wow. was just from from his mouth to my ears wow he Holy beat up yeah, a dude. fucking vet yep you're gonna listen to the director after that <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe we should do something different here yeah. fuck you got to that you. vet murdering me how was the yeah. uh, how was the shoot we beat up a veteran <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah not great yeah wow he said it was like oliver in the mud in the rain too, though like, isn't he i could feel like i saw it is he isn't oliver, oliver stone a vet or no i think maybe yeah maybe that's why he's like you know fuck you i know what i'm doing yeah I think he was. Interesting. Oh, he was a soldier in Vietnam. Yeah, there we yeah. go. He's yeah. probably like, why did the studio send this guy? I know what I'm doing. So it's a vet versus a vet. It's two. I went to a party in Hollywood once and he was sitting in the bushes. Like, I'm not kidding. He was like binoculars. Drunk. Yeah. Camouflage. He was like, it was like some party in the hills. And I'm with my buddy and we're like, dude, is that Oliver Stone? And he's like scrumming around in the bushes by himself. I was like, this dude's the best. <laughs> I he'd be a good podcast guest. He'd be great. Yeah, he's he kind of going full story. conspiracy. Didn't he do that whole? Oh, is he conspiracy? I mean, was he oh, ever yeah. not? Ah. Fucking, uh, he made so many. He made the uh, the doors. JFK. I mean, oh yeah, he's, uh, he's always been doing. Did, the Fourth of July. He did those like uh, documentaries too about like they did, did the voiceover on yeah. some like uh, National Geographic something like that. Yeah, he's got some QAnon stuff cooking. Oh man, is QAnon still a thing? I don't know. Are they still around? It's a good question. <laughs> BT QAnon. Yeah. What uh? Yeah, so what? what's the uh, one with uh, Zoe Kravitz? So, that? yeah, Blink Twice, it's, uh, it's Zoe did a great job, man. It's not easy to make a movie. I mean, I've, I, I, as you guys know, there's not a lot of good shit out there, and she oh, yeah. fucking murdered it, and it's like a suspense thriller, uh, but it's got some comedy in it, too, so I'm sort of the comedic relief in this movie, which nice. is awesome. We shot it in Mexico a couple years ago. The strike held it up for a while, mm. which was sort of a blessing in the end because then she got to really take her time in the edit and do some yeah. cool stuff, and it's, uh, yeah, it's... Um, Man, it's it's a great movie. I just went to the premiere a couple nights ago here in New York, wow. and I saw Chappelle afterwards, hey. and he was there. I'm like, Dave, what's up? Um, I kind of know him just from being around comics and stuff, and he's like, man, that was a masterpiece. That was wow. really. And I was like, really? He was just blown away. He was like truly blown away, and I was like, wow. I told Zoe, I was like, Dave thinks it's a masterpiece. She's like, where is he? She ran over to talk to him. It was just kind of yeah. one of those magic nights. That's great. Yeah. They let yeah. him smoke in the theater? Uh, I <laughs> didn't see that, but I bet he would. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that he could smoke anywhere, right? He, do, he does that. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, he earned it, I guess. He oh, yeah, there we go. Eternity War, just like, hey, everybody. <laughs> new special coming out. Yeah. Putting so, gas in his car. Yeah. Let me just fucking. Oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Gina Davis is in the movie, and me and her wow. became friends because she well, she hasn't been around a minute. I she's like. the oh, best, yeah. man. So she really loves bad, corny dad jokes. So oh. I would be like writing bad dad Hell jokes yeah. on set, and we would just she'd write one and come up. So to this day, we text each other bad jokes all the time. Nice. Um, you know what? Remember her in uh, Long Kiss Goodnight? She was badass in that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. I never. Saw Earth her. Girls Are Easy and League of Their Own. No, she's and she's yeah, in Mensa. Great. She's an. It, oh really? Smart motherfucker. Oh, shit. Thelma and Louise. Oh, oh yeah. She won an Oscar for that's that, great, right? She won an Oscar movie. for something. Yeah. That, that movie is so much darker than you think. Oh, yeah. You think it's good. You just think of the fun. 
I don't know why I thought it wasn't going to be darker because the scene that we all know is them just driving That's off a true. cliff. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, it was, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was friendship. But it is a badass movie. What, does she get beaten up by a guy? In the yeah, beginning? her husband's beating her. Yeah. And uh, and they're just like, fuck it. And they're on the run. It's 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 pretty damn good. And he's the Ridley Scott, too. Oh, yeah, Ridley really Scott. Uh, young Brad Pitt. That shit's on. Yeah, that was his first thing, yeah. right? He was the hot guy on the couch. Yeah, smoking shirtless. weed. Yeah. Cowboy hat. I did, what was that? California. Uh, yeah, California no, with a K? Uh, with might, a K? Yeah, with a K, but this might be before California. Oh, yeah, that was kind of the first thing I think he did that put him on the map. Wait, is that his wife or his daughter? Where? Daughter. Oh, it's his daughter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he got the armor on the, the waist. Looked a little. Yeah. Looked a little chubby. Yeah, it was funny. I, sure. At one point, I think on Valentine's Day, she had a party in LA, Zoe, and I was sitting there looking at her, and she's sitting with her mom and dad, and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, you know, her mom is uh, Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet. Her dad's uh, Lenny Kravitz, and she's just the alien love child of these <laughs> beautiful people. And you're just like, what? She's like an alien, man. Lenny she's Kravitz the, is like 60 something with abs. So hot. Yeah. I think I said ass. <laughs> he's got an but, ass, too. But he, but he, uh, he said some quote recently that he's been abstinent for 12 no. years. No. Really? Good. That's we don't why, need him that's out why there. That's why he... I know. Really? Get him off the market. I don't think we're competing for the that's same true. ass. That's that true. means you got a lot of pussy. If you're... Uh, yeah. That's where, That's like like when you know when you're young, like, at least I was, I drank so much soda when I was young that I'm like, I don't like soda yeah. anymore. Yeah. Right. That's probably how he was with pussy. <laughs> probably. <laughs> He was like, I had enough Dr. Pepper for a lifetime. To be absent, you either get a ton of pussy and pull back or just get none. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I feel like he was the first. One awesome way to get rid of a bad habit is to distract yourself with a habit that's similar but good. Fume has you covered with their award-winning flavor. Air device. Oh, that's nice. That's good stuff. It isn't a vape, and there's no nicotine, so you can use it anywhere, and it doesn't become an addiction. It's a way to get out that anxious energy without hurting your body with flavors like crisp mint, orange vanilla, maple, pepper, and peach blush. You won't feel like you're missing out on anything. Yeah, I mean, this is awesome. I like having stuff just, you know, here. Nice, little oral distraction. Wait a minute. Not my favorite oral distraction, but it's up there. <laughs> Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you could be the next success story for a limited time. Use code DRUNK to get a free gift with your journey pack. Head to tryfume.com slash drunk. That's tryfum.com slash drunk, and use code DRUNK to get a free gift with your order today. All right. Oh, watch it. Hey, hey, joy mode. We Might Be Drunks brought to you by Joy Mode. If you're struggling in the bedroom, it's time to check out Joy Mode. Their sexual performance booster is an all-natural science-backed supplement to give your Johnson all the tools it needs and nothing it doesn't. Uh, Joy Mode also supports your blood vessel, cardiovascular, and heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, and <laughs> erectile function. You never hear about function. All you hear about is dysfunction. So they're bringing back function. <laughs> Functioning alcoholics over here. Oh, yeah. Just mix it up with six to eight ounces of water and drink up to 45 minutes before you get it on. 45 minutes before you get to the playground. <laughs> yeah. And bring a kid or they won't let you in. <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way. But, uh, yeah, this stuff's great. And, you know, a lot of these pills, you look like a psycho. A buddy of mine was at a restaurant with a girl on a date, and he liked her, and the pill fell out of his pocket, and he went to the bathroom, and two people said, Get away from this guy. He's trying to roofie you. And it was a it was a dick pill. Damn. So this is way better. So, uh, yeah, put that shit in your cocktail and snort it. When it comes to your sexual health, you don't want to skip corners. Get uh, Forget those sketchy gas station ED meds, too, and get Joy Mode. Go to joymode.com and get 20% off. Use code DRUNK at checkout. That's 25% off free shipping with code DRUNK at usejoymode.com sorry u s e j o y m o d e.com great sex solved naturally yeah like i was absent in high school yeah <laughs> you remember when you enter your virginity and you're like, oh, I'm going to get laid all the time now, and then you don't get laid for like two years? Yeah. yeah. But it's still good to just get it over with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was actually blown before. I mean, oh, me no, too. No, wait, I, everyone I, was. I had sex before blown. Oh, no, I was Sorry. definitely, oh. I was blown like nine times before I had sex. Whoa! Really? Yeah, it was like, oh. sex was hard. Sex was, it meant something to them. 
I've, I women know, back then they were like, yeah, I'll play. I don't give a shit. But like, but the sex are like, nah, I'm not losing to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, shit. sex is natural. I, sex is fun. Sex is best when it's one on one. What's hell on? yeah, dude? What's on that? Uh, Perry Como? No. <laughs> What's his name? Bobby Darren. <laughs> What's it? Duran Duran. Oh, girls on film. Anyway, that's a song. Yeah, I mentioned you last. Yeah, night George Michael. My- I mentioned you last night to my friend, and I was like, "Oh, he's you know he's a really good actor." And I was I was mentioning a couple movies here, and he's like, oh, "I don't know those. Like, I don't know movies." And I was like, "He did the song My Dick." Uh, <laughs> oh shit, I love that song. <laughs> yeah, man. That, man, that song is just won't go away. Uh, good, My yeah, Dick, like one. herpes. Yeah, exactly. Keeps popping up. Yeah, it went platinum. It's funny. I got a platinum plaque in my bathroom and did a million downloads, and I made the song in five minutes, fucking around. <laughs> and it was like, and then after. Kind of like talking about getting laid for the first time. You think it's gonna happen? We made this song in five minutes. Me and my boys. It's a hit. And then ever since then, I'd be like, "Hey, we're good. We're gonna make another. Never again." Time for a. Sequel. It was like an accident. Well, we did do my dick part two, and there it just go. wasn't the same. Ah. It was like we were trying to redo the magic, and it <laughs> yeah. was about the money, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's what it's all sequels about the money. Yeah. Wasn't pure. So there's only a uh. few sequels. Let's talk about them. There's only a few sequels that are better than the first. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Terminator. The or no, Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Terminators are. Arguably, I just watched it the other day. The first one's so fucking good, but Both that's good. a close one. Uh, Godfather 2 is better than Godfather. It's yep. close. I don't know, man. I don't know well, about I that. Brando in the first one, though. The first one's yeah. fucking good. Fuck. It's the second one perfect. is incredible, too. It's more action packed, the second one. He's in, you know, uh, Little Italy. Yes, yeah, honestly, that, that way he fucking knifes that motherfucker. Yeah, oh, the jump from damn. roof to roof. I love all that. Yeah, I love I Young Island. De Niro and Young Pacino. It is pretty iconic. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty great. What's another good sequel? Best uh, sequels? Yeah, what's another good sequel? Fuck, yeah. Is there a list? Be- see- Dumb and Dumber. No. <laughs> Terrifier 2. Uh, Never saw it. They're pretty violent. That just came out fast. Five yeah. eleven. Come on. I went to try to watch one of those recently. Oh, Captain track. America is pretty good. The Winter Soldier it. one. It's Never actually, seen it. I'm not a huge Marvel guy, but that's a pretty good one. People are saying that new Wick is pretty great. Dude, I was well, I caught like the second half on TV the other night, and I couldn't turn it off. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I put a podcast in on a plane and John Wick on silent, just because it's a great visual. Just the kicking ass and the knife fighting and the What shooting. podcast do you listen to? By the way, that's I'm so funny over. how overstimulated we all are. I know. Like, I know. I feel like the pod isn't enough. I got to fucking. I had a porno go on the other day while watching a documentary. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? I'm getting like the worst and the best kind of entertainment at once. And you were jacking off to JFK. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, I guess last night it's funny. I was trying to sleep in my hotel room in Brooklyn and it was just death silence. Mm. And I was like, I got to put on like an audio book or something. Same. I can't just lay here with nothing with my thoughts. I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay, just see if you could lay here and not entertain. Your, like, oh, I've done it's that. It's so fucking hard. It's so man. hard. It's so hard to just sit there. and the, Especially on the road when you're oh not home. Oh, my God. Home is easier. At least you're home. But yeah, on the road. On the road in some weird hotel I room. Soprano is like no, white noise. Yeah. Well, I, what'd you say about white noise? Sopranos. Oh, yeah. White, Anything, or I actually put on brown noise. I do that. Too, just yeah. to. What's Have brown some, noise? It's like white noise, but different octave it's or louder. something. It's yeah. like a, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Brown noise. More violent. I got it. All right. Well, I was just in Martha's Vineyard, and I'm like, all right, here I am, the most relaxing place on the planet. Uh-huh. I'm sitting on a porch in a rocking chair, looking out at the ocean, there's boats, there's seagulls, and I'm like, I wonder who's texting me. It's <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram. Hey, well, let me check my For You page and watch some whore twerking. Yeah. You know? We're fucked. So I put the you gotta iPod. The, in. You got to leave the phone in the room. Like I, yeah, yeah, you got to have it out of your way. Yeah, I, you know, we didn't grow up. I'm older than you guys, but um, I, uh, I feel like these kids now, man, that are like t- these kids that grow up with the phone, they're gonna be so fucked because they have access to the hardcore porn of at course. ten years old. I man, my ex girlfriend. I remember we were having dinner, and, and her little brother and her friends were in the other room, and her dad's like, "Guys, come to dinner." And she and I'm like, "Guys, come!" In. And I go in the room. And it's like three ten year olds sitting around an iPad watching the most hardcore, disturbing. No. And I'm like, "Oh, they're fucked forever." Oh, wow. my they're God. fucked forever. Their hardwiring is like they think they got to do this now. Yeah. They, and they're the virginity. It was like violent porn. Oh. It was disturbing, oh, and I'm no, like, "Oh, yes. this is just every kid oh. now wow. has access to that." I'm sure and, our parents look at us like that too. Probably, yeah, but we yeah. just had. I remember my stepdad 
had like a Playboy under the cushion, and it would just be a still photo of some boobs, and you're like, whoa! But like, yeah. this is a whole. I remember j- at summer camp, like jerking off in the fucking bathroom stall to like a Club magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. hot. Yeah, Club was hot. Club was cool. That was, but that was hardcore. That was hardcore. Penetration. Yeah. Yeah. But you're just like, fuck. You're like, it, you pass it around. You're like, this is page 67 yeah. is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fucking yeah. Check it out. Buried out yeah. in the woods. Yeah. It's, uh, no, it's, it, you're right. It's over. There was a picture from 2000 and it was in New York. It just was on, I saw it on Twitter somewhere and, and, uh, it just said, look, no one's on their phones. I know. No interacting. I see that all the you, time. I think you were more alert with your neighbor, but also like sometimes, it is good to zone out. It, it's tough. It's a tough line, line to walk. Yeah. It's hard. If you can get over the hump, like you're like, all right, I'm going to pick up this book and read it. And everything is telling you, fuck the book, get the phone. But if you can get over the hump of the, the boredom, you'll get into the book. It's like watching a foreign film. Just give it like five yes. minutes yeah. and you're in. It's same, it's same with reading. You just have to just commit to the... Uh, yeah, and I would say the yeah. same with sex with the wife. She's like, I don't want to. I'm like, give it five. <laughs> I'm done. We'll She's here. reading. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, fuck uh, me. Yeah. But yeah, got to push through. You got to do it. And when you get to the other side, because they say if you go, they have all these retreats now where you go for two weeks and you don't use your phone. And the first four days, you're like, yeah, dude, jonesing. And then you're like, completely cured. You just got to yeah. get through but don't, it. But don't you yeah. kind of weirdly judge those people a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. when I was over, like, I just go back to a retreat. I'm like, you're fucking weird. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I admire you, but it's weird. Yeah. And they always tell a story. They're like, yeah, the first day I was crying my yes, eyes out. I'm like, yes. yeah, I don't want to do that. No, yeah. that sounds like hell. <laughs> but uh, they'll get there. I, I bet kids too in the future will have a thing where they're like, going off phone is cool. Well, I heard kids, I heard now, I forget who's telling me, like that, that kids were like 15 and 16 are like, social media is corny. That's what my parents do. Yeah. Like, that's what. Wow. Yeah, that now it's kind of like old and corny and like, Good. your parents do it. Good. That's how full circle it's gotten. Yeah, it's going to be weird though when rap is corny. I know. You know, because we like rap. Right. So my kids are going to be like, Yeah, that's oh, like oldies. Sucks. It's yeah. not going to be corny. It's just going to be different types of rap. Like, like if you listen to rap now, it's so different than the rap. That's true. With. Like, it's so funny. I'll hear this shit. By the way, can I give you a peeve based off yeah. of that? My peeve is when the gym plays music that shitty. Oh god, uh, you got to play broad. You got to play broad stuff at the, yeah, the gym. Yeah, true. It's gonna it be happened to me everybody. yesterday. My Get boy Sean me Paul to eat the fuck off was... at the gym. <laughs> I, had I don't to really put, care what people say. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I had to put Gasolina. my earbuds. I had to put my earbuds in to mute the sound of the music. You know, yes. you, because it's so. I yeah. do the same and, thing. Uh, well, it's better than when the guy brings his own boombox. Oh yeah, I remember famous that. story. I, I used to work at the rec, so it's just old people and poor people yeah. and me. Yeah. And uh, one guy would have a, the rap music blaring every day. We all hated him, but you know, Radio great. Raheem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's a racial component, so you, you let it slide. And then another guy brought one in one day, and they just played it together, and they hated each other. <laughs> uh, and they're like, "Fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. This is my music." And he's like, "But this is my music." And I and now everyone else in the gym is going. Now you get it. Yeah. We hate all of you. It's like when someone's loud on the phone in public with, on speakerphone and like everyone can hear you like, I, you want to go up next to them and do the same thing yes. to shut them up. Yeah. Yes, the Larry David. Yeah. Oh, is that a Larry David? Yeah, thing? he's at dinner one time and a guy's on this phone like, I know, right? Then the guy said this and then Larry uh, David just starts going, oh man, the uh, other day I was yeah, doing yeah. this and the guy looks over, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, great. yeah. That's the thing. LD. And then going back to the reading thing, man, I feel like, I, I, like I'll read a book and a week later someone's like, well, well how's the book? I have no idea <laughs> what I read. It's hard to retain. Like I don't retain any, I'm really? like, I truly have no idea what I read. And then on top of that, I'll read a page and I'm like, I was just thinking about 87 other things. I got to read the page Same. four fucking times. Well, you got ADD. I no do have ADHD. It. Yes. Yes. I'll do that when I read drunk. Sometimes I'll come home drunk. You could read drunk? drunk? Clearly not. Oh. I'll come home and I'll try and then I'll just be like, I'll, I'll be like 40 pages in. The next yeah. day I'm like, fuck, I got to yeah. reread all these pages. I was blackout drunk. Any book yeah. wrecks? I, you know what I loved? Is the I shout out Matt Ruby? I said this on Rogan recently, but Matt Ruby told me to read the Agassiz book called Open. Oh, oh that's yeah. ghost written. He was on meth. It's is he on meth? Yeah, that's it's, incre- it's incredible. Whoa, I, I loved that. it so much. I heard it's great. I, uh, I never read it. Even if you don't like sports, you'll love it. It's okay. It's uh, that's it's moving. It's hilarious. Mm. It's 
it's fascinating. It's a guy who's so hard on himself and obsessed and, you know, such a rebel. His, he called his dad the dragon. He mm. hated his dad. They send, basically sent him away. He referred to, like, these tennis camps as prison because wow. they knew they had a prodigy on their hands. So once they saw him, they didn't uh-huh. want to get rid of him, and he knew that. And he was like, fuck you. I, ha- I hate it here. Whoa. They, they were just – the dad would call and say, like, no, 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 money's not a problem. We want him here. Whoa. And he just heard, like, oh, they just added time onto my prison sentence like that. I had to Jesus. stay there. But he realized he was miserable there. So he was like, I'm going to act out. So he was like, you know, he'd go get like a pink mohawk, an earring. You know, he'd start dressing in like jean shorts. He'd start yeah. dressing like a girl and be like, <laughs> fuck you. Wow. And he'd win these tournaments dressed like that as like a rebel. It's hilarious. Wow. I mean, he's he's an awesome dude. I just, I, I have yeah. so much respect for him. But Everybody then also he's like. says that book's good. It's incredible. It's a ghost written by the guy who did uh, The Tender Bar, which is was a popular uh-huh. one. Uh-huh. But he. uh Good dude, wreck. Dude, he's... Uh, J.R. Moringer. Yeah, he is just so hard on himself the way we are. Like, he, uh-huh. he, he is so... He's like, oh, I couldn't get over the hump with Sampras, but he, uh-huh. dude, he had this insane career. He's like, top yeah. 10 ever. So he hated tennis the whole time. Hated it. That's how he opens. He goes, I fucking hate tennis. Wow. And he married Steffi Graf, who's like, you know, one of the best female players of all time. Oh, that's right. And... Uh, that's gotta be awkward. And he was in love with her for years. Whoa. That's and, like prior marrying Joan Rivers, you know. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah, but no, it's it's so good. The book is it. I couldn't put it down, man. I got a, a rec book, Please. Uh, Blood Meridian. Yeah, I've okay. heard that's great. Who, wait, man, who wrote that again? Uh, fucking Oppenheimer, De La Renta. Fuck, I can't remember his name. <laughs> Blood uh, uh, Gang. Cormac McCarthy. Cormac McCarthy. Yeah, oh. he did No Country for Old Men. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I tried to read, but then if you see the movie first, I know everything that's about to happen, and I'm picturing the actors they hired. So you, I think you can't go that way. You got to read the book before the movie. Yeah, you got. But that Blood right. Meridian. They've tried to make a movie out of it a few times, but they it's too good. You can't fucking do it, and it's cursed because every time they've tried, something's gone wrong. It's it's incredible. Book, book mark man. this. I want to remember. Yeah, this. Blood Meridian. It's like the most violent, dark, fucked up book. You'd love it. How's the violence on paper? It's pretty. It's it, yeah. It's there, man. It, it's yeah. Yeah. It, it's disturbing. And Whoa. It, yeah, I recommend I'm that it one, up, dude. Yeah. Um, he also wrote The Road, which is yeah. a good movie. Great movie. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Never saw that. Uh, Vincent De La Foria. No, Vincent. Price? No, uh, D'Onofrio. No, no. Oh, oh, um, uh, oh, shit. Oh, here's another wreck I got. Is when you're trying to think of something, don't Google it. Give yourself Ooh. a couple minutes and see. I'll get it. I'll get That's it. Good. I'll get it. Yeah, he's and then you'll get it. History of violence. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Um, Viggo Morton. Viggo Mortensen. We didn't Google. Dude, uh, Vincent Price. I just watched a movie he's in. He great actor from the '40s. You know, he was the guy in the Michael Jackson video too. Yeah, that's right. But Whoa. He's, bless you. Wow, that was that was adorable. Oh, that thanks. was like the cutest sneeze I've ever seen. Was that? He's the guy who goes, "My, I'm coming." In the beginning of Thriller, he's like, yeah. "Come out and suck my cock." Whatever. <laughs> that was him. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's. Uh, I watched this movie with uh, called uh, "Fuck Saver from Heaven." It's with Gene Tierney. <laughs> Really? Oh my what god, that? what the fuck? The dog? I'm trying to keep it low. Was that, the dog? Want to that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Strangle <laughs> a fucking bird? <laughs> uh, Saver from Heaven. Yeah, Gene Tierney was like the hottest chick. Of oh, movie. really? Gene Tierney. You know, you're a noir guy. You know, she's right. in a movie called Laura, where it's like one of the best noirs of all time. Uh huh. But Vincent Price is in that with her, too. But he's in this one called Saver from Heaven, and it's fucking, it's basically Fatal Attraction before Fatal Attraction, uh-huh. mm. where he meets this gorgeous woman on a, I mean, Leah, pull a picture of her. He met her on Tinder. Fox. He meets her on a train, and he's like, she's so hot, th- ends up marrying her. She's furious anytime there's anyone else in the picture, crazy jealous. Uh-huh. He's got a brother who's disabled, and she like hates the brother for just being there. Wow. So I'm not, I don't want to give too much away, but it's fucking hilarious. It's. Oh, yeah, she's she was hot. a fucking fox, Hachi dude. Machi. Now, is she related to Moira Tierney? No. Okay. Hey, here's a random thing. Uh, do you guys notice, like, if you watch Cheers or something, everybody looked a lot older in the 80s that oh. was 40 years old. Why? No doubt about Why it. Why is that? Well, is it they smoked on planes and things were they didn't know about health? I think people were rougher. There wasn't as much health stuff going around. No one was like vegan or gluten. Vegan Mortensen. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you live longer, I think you just kind of right. like you just kind of like well, I gotta stay. Once the yeah, life expectancy but, moves further up, you're kind of like guess. I gotta get this shit tight. I gotta stay it together. But uh, I guess. it's just weird how everyone looked old. And do, do you think there was like really hot girls back in like barbarian days? And would they just get like? 
kidnapped and raped to death? Like, what happened sure. with hot girls back Look then? at, like, Wilford yeah, Brimley. Course. Pull up a picture of Wilford yes. Brimley. That guy was, like, in his 40s, and he oh, looked yeah. like he was 87. Well, they always show him versus, like, Look at Tom this Cruise. Guy. Yeah, he's now, 22 he... right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, but when he's, like, young. Yeah, pull up young Wilford Brimley. He's still fucking. He was never he young. He was never a kid. No. Look at that. Wow. Let's see Paul Rudd. They got him next to Paul Rudd. And That's not the fair, same though. age. Was he in the Cocoon? Tim That's Walls true. and fucking <laughs> Cocoon. And yeah, Brad Cocoon. Pitt. I'm like, put anyone next to Brad That's Pitt. That's true. Oh, Cocoon was about them staying young, right? He's playing like 40 in Cocoon. Jesus. See, I mean, you're yeah. 50. I know. I don't get it. That's crazy. You look good, man. What I do feel you, good. What do you do to stay looking so... No good? wife, no kids. That'll do it. Yeah. I sleep, I sleep alone. He's 51 in Cocoon? Wow. What? No way. That's hilarious. No one ever checked in on him? Like, maybe this guy's got some problems with health. Uh, <laughs> he looks rough. You know, I'm really obsessed with uh, Chris Elliott, Get a Life. Remember that oh, show? Oh, sure. I and he plays it. a 30-year-old paper boy yeah. who lives with his parents, and it's his real dad in the show. But he's 30, and he's, like, bald and old. But he's 30. I know. And it's I, bu that's my wreck. That show, they're all on YouTube. I gotta watch. So it, it holds up. It's so fucking funny. It was such it's a weird. weird, experimental, random comedy. Like, it, it's fucking brilliant brilliant man he's oh, the best shit speaking of rex i gotta give a hard wreck dude yeah. uh incoming on What's netflix that? oh yeah the turning brothers wrote a new movie on netflix called incoming it's like super bad level funny really it's wow. just an airtight have you not watched it yet i haven't seen I've it even yet. heard of it dude it's so funny really we're watching a, kids it's fucking you'll get over in a sec really because it's, it's written by adults and it's, that's true and it's just a bunch okay. of freshmen who are terrified of being freshmen in high school. That was the it, most awkward time. It's just fucking killer. It's, All right. It's okay. hilarious and it's got heart. It's great. All right. I'm, I'm going to watch it. Watch it, dude. Okay. And we had coming. the Churning Brothers on the pod who, yes. who wrote it. And I feel bad I didn't watch it before it came out, but I don't feel as bad that Mark hasn't even seen it yet. I stick. You should watch it. It's really great. Okay. All right. I can't wait. And they watched, they read our script and liked it. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, who who wrote Netflix did? Uh, these no. Cherner brothers, the guy who wrote this. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll check it out. Check it out. It's all. It's so good. But yeah, there's a there's an Instagram account called Kids in the 80s, and it's high school kids, and they all look like they're 71. Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. I don't get it. It, 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 that, it, was, it wasn't that long ago. I don't understand what happened. So we're getting better looking. Look I at guess J-Lo. So. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, just got divorced again, That's huh? True. Didn't she yeah. just get divorced <laughs> got again? Divorced. I can't keep up. Uh, She's like 54. Yeah. Yeah. Is she? Yeah, but you know wow. what? She's like sucking the souls of people. That's oh, how she yeah. stays young. 100%. Because she, she does not look happy ever. No. No. No, and neither does Affleck. Does she laugh? I don't think, so. I think she uh, could laugh. I, I, She's a New Yorker. She might laugh. There she is laughing. There you go. Jenny you Yeah, but you know what I mean? Don't trust someone who doesn't laugh. That's such a weird thing. But she's laughing at like sucking someone's soul. Yeah, that's there. true. <laughs> not, that's not a real laugh. Yeah, and she, no one is allowed to look her in the eye, so maybe that keeps you young. No way. Like a barista with me. Yeah, that's on a ride. Is rider. that a real thing? That's, uh, that's out there. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, that don't look at me. No, that's real. a real thing. I've heard it. Certain actors, you can't look at them. I want to put that on my rider. Fuck it. Uh, I like it. Jeez, Eye please. contact. Too intense. I think that's when you lost this. When you're drinking your own Kool-Aid, when you can't have people look at you. Get over yeah. yourself. <laughs> right? I mean, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. I mean, what's that all? What did uh, Bill Burr had a thing where he's some one of his favorite rock stars puts a hood up, and that means don't talk to me. And uh, then, hey, if the hood's down, I'm uh, I'm I'm willing to socialize. God, what, what's his he, take on that? He said it's a good move because you don't have to look like a dick. You know, if you're like, I can't talk right now, I'm, I'm gonna go in my room and lock the door. But if you got the hood up, everybody just goes, Ah, he's he needs a minute. He's an introvert. What if you're in the KKK? Oh, I, I was the hood question. means I was trying to think of a joke yeah. there. You got yeah. Me. And another, another thing, if the TV's in front of me, like this whole show, I'm just looking at the TV. Yeah. I, I'm an only child who grew up with TV as my best friend. I'm just like, oh, I can't. I, I got it. You guys are humans. Dog in front of me. No. Why am I looking at the fucking TV? Oh, I do that with a bar. Are you ever on a date yes, called a bar? Impossible to not look at the fucking. Like, oh, here's a peeve. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. 
commercials are so loud and they're legally allowed to make the commercial louder so they know if you go to take a piss in the bathroom, Whoa. you're going to hear the commercial. So commercials I are like it. a few octaves louder than the show you're watching. I hate so that. So I remember growing up, my dad would always mute the commercials. So I'd do that as a habit. And I'll notice people do like, what are you muting it for? I'm like, what do you need? Do you need to hear the commercial? Right. Like we don't need to fill our brains with a fucking loud ad. You're right. It's so annoying. That's a good, that's a good, good pee. Yeah, yeah they do that. That's Wreck and a peeve, mute it, and it's a peeve. And I used to watch TV to go to bed when I was a kid. Oh my god, still I can't. Yeah, it's like the podcast. I need to have what's, something. What's on. Like a oh comfort go to bed show for you? Oh, um, oh man, that's a good question. Something you don't have to pay attention to. Like uh, my comfort movie, my favorite movie that that uh, I, I just love uh, is Midnight Run. Ooh. It's something that movie's the perfect Great movie. movie. Yeah. And it's the only thing it doesn't have is a love story, but there's a seven minute scene in the middle of the movie where he has to go borrow money from his ex wife yeah. and his daughter's there. Uh -huh. And it's the most moving scene, yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's uh I think it's De Niro's funniest role. Yeah. Um him and Groden together. It's the perfect movie, man. I agree. And, uh, wow. It's so good. It's so good. Road Joe List used to say that doing the road with me was like Midnight Run. <laughs> 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 we were just fucking beating each other's throats. <laughs> yeah. But uh, great movie. I got to rewatch it. I haven't seen it. It's Marty Brest. It's pretty fantastic. It's and, like a perfect movie. And all the cameos are like every character actor yeah. is in it. Like, Fucking Dennis Farina and yep. John Ashton. Oh, and wow. Fucking, uh, what's his name from The Sopranos? Joe Pantoliano. <laughs> Plays I'm, such a good scumbag. Joey Pants. He's yeah. great. I love... Uh... Uh, Rodin, but where, where did, was he a comic? Where did he come from? He wasn't a comic. I think he was like a theater actor. Oh, okay. He's in that uh, Gene Wilder funny. documentary, there's like a whole thing on him. I'll like he was that. mean to Gene Wilder, telling him he'd never make it because he had an ugly face and he made him yeah. work harder. Well, you're going into comedy. You could be ugly. Exactly. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great movie. That's my comfort back on a movie that I could just have on. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, I got a peeve for you. Okay. Please. Now, I was just in Martha's Vineyard with the lady. So it's a lot of lady time. How what, was it good overall? It was great. It was great. We had a great time. You can't not have fun there. The beach all day, drinks at night, the food, the shrimp, the oysters. You know, it's great. That's perfect. Perfect. Where, where do you stay when you're there? Uh, we get like a little hotel right on the right on the right wow. on the beach, Oak Bluffs, and nice. it's great. And her sister's there with their kids, so they have a pool, so you can pop it on that, do a little barbecue, jump in the pool, poke the kids, and then get get the hell out. Uh, but. This is my my wife will do this one. We'll walk by. We'll be like, hey, we're gonna go get lunch. Let's go get lunch. And we'll walk by a restaurant. She'll go, you want to go here or you want to go somewhere else? And I'm like, hmm, well, I guess we're going here now. Those are the options already. We can go here or we can go anywhere else. But you're pointing to here, so obviously I'm like, just tell me you want to go here. You want to suck my dick or do something else? Yeah, exactly. She so wanted to do something else. But, uh, but yeah, so it dro drove me crazy. I was like, just say you want to go here. She's like, I don't care. I'm like, well, you pointed this one out out of all the thousand restaurants. So yeah. just say it. You know what, you know what I love it. to do? When you when you're debating on what to order with with the lady, I was like, give me three types of foods. There's four oh, different types of food. Yeah, it's so easy. Give me three, and she can. I'm like, all right, I'll give you three. What do you mean, like Asian, like sushi, Indian, sushi, Chinese. pizza, fucking Italian? Yeah, give me three. Yeah, and I'll and I'm I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. But you got to give me three. Yeah, she can't give you three sometimes. That's crazy. And usually I have to give the three, and then she's like that one. I'm like, all right. That's the problem with like the cheesecake factory. It's too many options. Give me eight options. Yeah. I'll pick something. I'm gonna over one. That's why they say too. I don't know how to parent. I don't have kids, but they say that you should never ask your kids like, where do you want to eat? It gives them anxiety. You're supposed to like tell them oh, where really? we're gonna eat here. If you ask a kid, they just start getting scrambling, and then because you know they're doing coke sucking dick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I Dude. started. Yep. I'd say cheesecake factory. It's like. It's too many you know, options. What are we doing? How healthy shit is too. You eat there, you're like, how does an omelet have 3,600 calories? I know, right? It's crazy. They, oh, really, they say the calories on oh, there? Oh, I hate that. You have to. But everyone in there is fat as shit, so yep. you're, you're fucked if you're in there. If you're is in there, there, you're getting fat. Why is it called the cheese? Do they have a factory that makes cheesecakes? It's the last factory in America. Mm -hmm. They're all going away. Let me grab my phone. I got a couple wrecks. And oh, yeah. you see? He's addicted. Yeah. He well, can't well, stop. I'm just kidding. I'll show, I got to show you something else. We, I'll send it to you if you could throw it on if you want. Uh, fuck. <clears throat> All right. I got some wrecks and peeves. Oh, you want to oh. do, do wrecks or you want to do something oh, else? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's I feel see. like I already gave like four wrecks today. Oh, yeah. you, guys, you guys do the wrecks. Um, 
oh, I don't know why this bothers me. You ever accidentally call someone and you're like, no, because yes. then they see you called and then they call you yes. and, and you pocket dial and it just, oh, like, I'm going to kill me. It's mom. hard to pocket dial now with the iPhone. It, it happens. But um, it happens, yeah. It happens. Or I, well, I wrote this, loud commercials. And you ever in a taxi or an Uber and the guy's blaring commercials? Uh, like, what are we doing? You don't hear this? The Hate taxi, it. I'm loyal to the taxis here, but there are so uh, many problems. Yeah. In a world so with many. no ratings, it's madness. It's madness. They are, they've not been called it's literally like they're like single people they haven't been called on their shit yes. right. so they're just like I'm gonna behave yes. horribly yes. Yes. meanwhile the, the Uber people they've been raided but I, I'm still lower to the cabs yeah, you I love the cabs you're well, New York I'm a New York guy they got done dirty it's fucked up but you go in there and it smells like shit half the time and then I, I ride back from JFK and you're like oh fuck it's like 90 minutes and he's just on the phone like like ah, la, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, just like yelling I'm like yeah, yeah. Who got, you don't have to yell it yeah, I, know, yeah. I know who's on the other end just some guy like <laughs> no he's doing the same thing yeah that's they're true. just screaming back and forth <laughs> is it a, they're never like yeah yeah i did this yeah that's true it's never once never this that. one's whisper it's always at that's an 11. What, look at the rex get a life hey oh, yeah. nice you, fucking, you did it that's just get a, a life you're the one best. of the few that come prepped we don't have to even prompt yeah yeah but along with the butt dial you ever done this one i'm on instagram and uh you know sometimes a little notification will pop down oh like, my god story so i'm like hold on yep so i'm like oh how about that and you click on it and it's actually godfrey's doing a live video right now and you're like oh shit i don't want to be in godfrey's live video like, <laughs> i don't want to watch godfrey work out and talk uh, to the camera and so you have to like click out click out but he probably saw you come he's in. like hey mark I yeah hey, mark you're, up, you're staying right here <laughs> yeah, like, watch oh. me do cosby motherfucker <laughs> and i like godfrey but no, i don't want to watch hilarious. somebody's uh private video or no, whatever he is hilarious. I mean, he's a great guest on here too great guest he's so fucking fun he is fun do people still go live on instagram is oh it? yeah all the time i do it like once a year if I'm like, I'm like, I've got a special come out. I'm like, hey guys, watch my special. Yeah, that's how I am. Oh, congrats on the special, man! It Thanks, fucking man. came out great. Thanks, dude. Love it. Look great, video, the suit. Same role, You've changed. Wasn't trying to do that, but there it you fucking, go. It was, I mean, it Prime was. Uh, yeah, that was, it just looked so good too, man. The suit, the set. I mean, it was sexy. Tan Sick. France, thank you, buddy. He, he it was his, that suit was his idea. Oh, really? Was oh, that well, your boy that directed it? No, that's my friend James Webb. But uh, no, Tan France is uh, from Queer Eye, and he. Uh, he was like, I was like, what suit do I wear? And he's like, oh, go to nice. This place. That was smart. You have to get it tailored to fit perfectly. That's smart. It's like having a card counter in Vegas. You got a gay fashion guy helping you. The dress. gay fashion the guy. The guy. You know, what, yeah, because we're wearing a suit. Don't you feel different when you wear a suit? Like I know oh, I yeah. walk different. I oh, feel yeah. more like but there's I like a in swagger and a confidence. Before. You what? I, I did a gig in Vegas like a few weeks before, and I was like, let me throw a suit on so it doesn't feel weird because it's you know. I can't keep telling. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm not just gonna keep telling the story when I see what's coming. <laughs> Couldn't get that it out. Good I, had to, one, I had to do the weird not shit. It's like the end of New Jack City. He's like, "Fuck you, man." <laughs> I was doing a lot of dial gauging down there. Like, don't open it up too much, but keep it closed so it makes <laughs> oh, a noise. You ever notice how when you're almost home, your body knows you're gonna take yes, a shit yes, soon? Yes, That's exactly. fascinating. Oh my god, I your was body knows as the keys open. It's like you went full '90s comic there. You ever notice? <laughs> it's not just <laughs> about to be home. I was on a Zoom podcast the other day. I'm doing my friend's Zoom pod, and I felt the shit coming on. And oh, like, shit. Just please wrap it up. It's been, it's oh. been over an hour. I think he's going to wrap it up. And uh, just as we're about to wrap up, he's like, well, if you want to plug anything, I'm like, oh, great. This shit's about to I come. Yeah. plug my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but then it just turns into another five minutes, another five minutes, and my body's uh. like, dude. Uh, it's like your body's like, dude, yeah, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wrap right, it up. Right, yeah, what are Enough we doing? fucking talking. Yeah, yeah, but nothing better when your ass hits that seat. It just, oh. woo yeah. full oh. fire hose. That's one of the. That's one of the, the best feelings, and one of the best feelings is when you first get into a hotel room, whip off those pants. Yes. Oh, yeah, I get a pod going on the sink, and I'm just shitting like a toddler. Oh, yeah. Well, they say, so uh, I got the, uh, what's it called, the epidemiology. What's it called when they check your butthole? The etymology. Etymology. Oh, it's, it's called a rhododendron when they check your asshole. What's it is called? that what that's called? No, uh, there's a word for it when you go to get your colonoscopy. There it is. Damn, I th I, that was like, yeah, I, I was going to nail that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you're the youngest. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a wreck. Go get a colon or go get your ass checked. Uh, How was that? Um, you're supposed you to do it at ever? 50, but now they say 40. 45. Okay. Uh, you want to yeah, make sure yeah. you don't have any problems down there. 
And um, used to be forty, so it keeps used, up. Oh, I thought it was fifty, and it went down to forty-five. Oh, oh I, I don't know. Either way, if you're in your forties, I there's a wreck. Go check your butthole. There you go. Wait, what were we? Just, there was a point of what I was just shitting say, at the shitting. hotel room. The it hotel feels room. good to shit. Check your ass. There's a wreck. Check your ass. Etymology. Oh man, there was something. Colonoscopy. They, they this beer's pretty it. good. I haven't had a beer in a while. That's a solid it's a good beer. Whoever picked these, good job. Yeah, man. Thank Food you, Pilsner. dude. No, no, I got to do two shows tonight in Jersey. Oh, where in Jersey? Stress Factory. Stretch Factory? Stress. Oh. <laughs> I, am, I am working out. I'm trying to get my... Wait, oh, out. man. I had a good thing about the butthole. Anyway, mm. I'll think of it when, I'm not, when I leave here. Fuck. Milk and the prostate? Uh, prostate. Yeah, I, learned, I learned about that from Road Trip. So did I. What? I, was, I was like a 13-year-old kid in the movie theater, like, a woman's finger has to go up your ass? I know, and I was like, oh, good to know. I'll try well, my, this tonight. I rent a place in L.A. from my buddy, and he has the Japanese toilet seats. Those uh, are warm. Uh, and uh, yeah, at first, your one. instinct is, oh, this is warm. Someone just took a shit here. They're like, oh, no, it's heated. And, uh, man, is that a whole nother level of luxury. I oh, here's the, the wreck. I at, I got uh, Grand I got Central. I was here's like, the this wreck. is heated. Here's the, <laughs> here's the wreck. My doctor told me. You got it don't, back? Don't, I got it back. He said, don't bring your phone into the bathroom when you take a shit. Mm. Because when you're sitting on the toilet, if you're wasting time on your phone, that's what causes hemorrhoids is right. your body sitting there. So don't just sit there on your phone because you'll sit there for in. eight times longer than you would if you just went in there to drop a deuce without your phone. Oh. So don't bring your phone in the bathroom. You'll get in and out quicker. How about a book? sitting there doom scrolling. How about, how about a book? Though? Same I, shit. I guess. Same, same shit. I got thing. a book in there too. So I'll mix it up yeah just like I guess they limit wow. your time sitting there because your body like interview pushing. books like in the in the bathroom yeah. and you just read a passage interview uh, books yeah like oh a, like yeah, a, yeah you know like an interview i brought in the cheesecake factory man <laughs> i got six hemorrhoids <laughs> dead drama very nice yeah <laughs> well remember as a kid i was reading ajax i had the you know the the like the scrub shit Mr. Bubbles, I'm just reading anything. It's just so bored shitting. I remember, yeah, I was taking a Uber over here from Brooklyn, and I was like on my phone. I'm like, just look out the window, and then I'm like, just enjoy the view. And then I'm like, I look out. It's like industrial, but I'm like, there's no view to enjoy. I'm yeah. Like, but I'm like, well, you used to just look out the window and like ponder and have a thought and come up with something instead of just feeding your brain. Like you will create a thought instead of mindless scroll. But then it's the great debate of like, did I think of more shit when I was just wandering out the window? Or do I think of more shit because I'm being yeah, stimulated yes. by the Gaza, right, by right, porn, right. by fist fights, by animal attacks? Who knows? Gaza Strip Club. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> they were wearing full burkas. It was a bummer. Uh, what well, anything else in the works? Like any movies that you're like coming up that you're pumped about? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that no auditioning. You got oh, the audition shooting. tips, by the way? Oh, um, well, whatever, okay, whatever, yeah. Whatever here's the, oh, I got a good note that I got from um, Zoe. Uh, okay, I'm here shooting Poker Face, which oh, is right. a good show. So I'm shooting that. Natasha Leone. Yeah, oh, Natasha cool. Leone. And, uh, but Zoe Kravitz gave me a really good note. I was uh, on set doing our... Let it, yeah, man. All right, that was the last one. I have one. to lean my way. With <laughs> <laughs> uh, lean I lean my way. Sophie's choice there. Yeah. <laughs> I hit him last time. <laughs> so Zoe said to me i kept wanting to add stuff in the scene i'd be like hey in this one can i um you know what if i did this i always wanted to make some, a meal out of it just a, a, and she one day she goes simon you're enough Ooh. and it was like oh shit it was like one of those light bulb moments i don't need to add a fucking like shtick to every scene she's like you're enough just do Mark, the did you hear that one you don't have to fart every two minutes <laughs> you're <laughs> no, enough buddy minutes. Uh, enough. <laughs> it's never not funny uh but she was right and it was like oh my god that's that simple she's right what a good note and since she told me that that's kind of been my mantra when i'm shooting something it's like you're enough dude you don't gotta especially like it ain't theater where you got to do some loud big performance for the last yeah. row. The fucking camera's so tight on your face. You don't got to do a lot and your instinct is to act yes. and perform and it's taken me 25 years of doing this shit to be at a place where I can just relax and not act. Right. That not sounds pretentious but it's true. Um, my advice is don't act. Like just yeah. be normal but that's not easy to do. No. That takes a lot of time just for, for, I imagine for you guys doing stand up how long it took for you guys to be relaxed and just do the jokes and not be tight and you know what I mean? Like just fucking Oh relax. sure, sure. Listen to one of your relax. specials names. Don't be yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good, just a good it's motto. A, You're it, enough. Exactly, and in and in anything, and having dinner, like you, I don't know. I I think I feel the need to entertain and perform and people please, and it's like, dude, just relax. Yeah. You know? 
That, so there, advice. yeah, that was a good note that she gave me. A very good just, note. Yeah, just, thanks, Zoe. Just you're enough. That's yeah. heavy. It's kind I of know wild. it was like kind of deep. It was like because I, I have the same thing. I always think I gotta be on and do this, and then you watch some guy. I'm like, that guy's never on, yeah. but he's he's enough. Yeah, I still yeah. like him here. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Good advice. Like if the Zoe. joke's good, you don't gotta do too much. You no, know? no. Is that called act outs? Is that a thing? That, is that taboo in comedy to do an act out? No, I think no. if the I mean, Pryor did a lot of act outs. Yeah, you know, I think I think if the joke calls for it. It's yeah, cool. I guess it depends just on the all, comic. Yeah, I think like comics are we're snobs. We want a good joke. Like Stephen do. Wright ain't doing an act out. No, no, because the jokes are good enough. Yeah, right. but you know, there's some great act out guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You just want the writing to be enough. Right. You know, but right. But it's another gear, man. Burr will do act outs. That He's helicopter story. It. Yeah, I mean. You, and we do it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. This is about as far as I'll go. So I was digging the other day. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. That's an act out. I got some longer stories in my last <clears throat> hours, so it's like I'll 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 do a. <clears throat> I'm I'm not like physical, but I'll do like a little act out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, man. But I saw you do a set at the cellar. I came to see recently. You literally, I was watching, and you literally leaned against the wall with one foot up, and it looked like you were like in high school, just hanging with the boys, and it made the set so interesting and you were doing nothing it was like you being relaxed made it more I, I can't explain it man it's just like being too wound up is like the enemy of uh, of anything of the energy of it if you're I relaxed agree. I think the audience will be more relaxed yeah. and things will come up and you're not tight you know just yeah like, and you, your body well, language was, small, was so yeah. chill you were just like whatever I could be here I cannot be here and it was uh, more interesting to watch well, it's like, you know, when the crowd's small, it's like uh, you kind of play to that small energy. You know? Yeah. So it's yeah. like if it's like 80 people, I kind of play. But if I'm in a bigger venue, I'll kind of up it a little bit. Right, I kind of right. I kind of match, try to match their energy. But yeah, they were like I was doing new shit. A lot of it was was nothing. But uh, but as long as you leave with a few, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm fucking. Same with an you know. orgy. One lady <laughs> versus 10 people. You're going to bring a different energy. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. If there's like six people there, you probably have to be like, are you good? And I'll jerk you off yeah. for a second. Yeah. I'll fucking yeah. work the room a little and act out. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but to your point, you ever seen UFC fighters? Like the relaxed guy, you know, he's just kind of like this and uh, he's he's like looking at the other guys. Yeah. That guy always loses. The guy who comes out who's relaxed is scarier than the guy who's like, ah! scarier. Yeah, it's also that's just not the point. natural to who we are at this point. Like, you know, like if I were doing that, it would be not me it would be right. like putting it on right like if i'm me that's the energy that's right and it's it just feels more honest to them i, th I think and they probably feel more comfortable they're like oh he's not like putting something on but, right yeah you know, you're always putting something on but if like or if your stick is like sam kinnison where you're running around yelling i guess that's different but that's a different but i bet animal. he dialed it back in a small venue Probably. And that's another thing. I, I, I relate to you guys because I've heard, I think you talk about like if you're performing at the garden or something, that's the dream. But man, when the first row, the person's 30 feet away from you, you how not intimate that is, it's a different room. You, got, you would think it's sport, better, dude. but I yeah. prefer a little room. Like yeah. When I was doing my music thing for Dirt Nasty, I wanted a little dive bar. And if it was like a big place where the crowd was removed from you and you can't, it didn't feel as magic. You weren't connected or something. I like know. Smaller I, rooms. Yeah, small. But you got to do the big ones too. Yeah, you do what you can. You do everything. But yeah. You guys both did the garden? Um, no, I've never done MSG. Did you do the garden? I've only opened for people there. But you I'm, did the garden, technically did the garden. A couple times, yeah. <laughs> What's the biggest one you've done? Like My arena own or just open? Yeah, anything. Yeah, performed at. You know, you know, we did we both did a bunch of arenas with Amy back in the day. Uh, I did a, I did yeah. a bunch of Sandler's arena uh -huh. shows. Uh Bert, and then, we did the Bert, Greek. Yeah, we done a we done a lot of big arena shows but for a biggest one like on our own you know i think probably like somewhat similar yeah yeah definitely like msg theater was probably the biggest i've done on my own you guys listen to that? Oh, yeah. sorry no no i was gonna say is it hard there's that many people it's i don't know why that seems like it'd be harder for comedy for some reason like too many people oh and it's way harder it's weird because the comedy is all about a conversation and connecting and that's now right it's so much easier to to lose people. And also your style becomes more of that, I think, the more you do it. So I think my broadest hour is my first hour, honestly. Mm, it don't had feel, to be. Don't you feel that way too about Yeah, you? of course, yeah. I mean, you had to be broad because no one knew who you were, so you had to appeal to everybody. If you're right. bombing a corporate, don't you find yourself going back to like that yeah, first hour? Yeah, yeah. I do it too. Point. I got, it, it's the old shit. You're kind of just trying to tread water and you're like, this shit killed in America's got talent. Right. Yeah. Let me fucking bring out this fucking safe one for the corporate one so i don't 
totally die. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, it's like I remember going to see the Stones, and they're like, we're going to do a new song, and no one cared. They want yeah. the old shit. Give us the old shit. Well, it's funny how rock and roll or music is the opposite. You know, in the beginning, they're playing their niche, cool punk songs, and everybody goes, they sold out, man. Yeah. They went mainstream. Right. Whereas comics are mainstream in the beginning just to get some traction, That's and then right. you can become you. Yeah, but Billy Joel gets so much love for putting out, like, one new song in 30 years. Ah, it must be and, nice. And uh, and I like the song. I thought it was good, but it's also like, man, it is, he's also got such a crazy catalog that, like, of course you just want to hear that stuff yeah. live. You're like, I want my – that's a pricey ticket. You yeah, want to hear, yeah, the hits, Vienna and Piano Man, and you know, we didn't start yeah. the fire, all that stuff. Cadillac, ac, 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 you oh, ought to know. So by Vince now. Vaughn, a oh, great, yeah, you're a good singer. Vince Vaughn, <laughs> Vince Vaughn performs Vienna in the movie we did, Easy's Waltz. He plays a lounge singer, and he went and took singing lessons. So he plays like this kind of, you know, alcoholic lounge singer, and he performed Vienna, and he kind of does a lounge version of all these songs. And uh, I didn't even know that was uh, whose song was Billy, Billy Joel? Joel. Yeah, so it's really cool when you watch the movie. Vince is, is he just performing. Singing? Yeah, he's actually singing. And can he uh, sing? Yes, he's and it's his voice. It's obviously his voice. Like you, he has a cool voice. He's got his like deep Vince Vaughn thing, and he's just kind of throwing it away. Like speaking of throwing it away, he's just lounge singing, and it's just so cool. How, yeah. Why did he train for that? He just hired he went to singing like, lessons. But can, can can a singing teacher take like? Can they take you from like? here to here or can they get here to here like what do they take it's a from? good question i bet i don't know i mean i guess i think he went from zero to something because he had never sang before but uh yeah, but he maybe just he has, has a cool magical. voice yeah. yeah he has a cool voice and uh yeah i can't imagine him singing okay yeah, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> i can't even do vince vaughn but yeah so has such a distinct style of do you talking. think like my point is do you think a singing coach could make it so mark and i have a decent singing voice see i i think you, you, you whitney houston was born with that voice That's what i, I mean. think you either got it or you don't and you can probably get better but it's got going to, I, I said this before i don't know if i said it here but like going to like i remember going to a comedy class here in new york and i was like None of these people are funny. They're not going to learn to be funny. That's true. They're, it's in your. It's in you. You can learn the math of a joke a little yeah. bit, but you can't. Funny is funny. It's like Maybe a rhythm. It style. is music. Maybe like, but like Shatner doesn't have a great voice. He just is like, mm. uh, that's me. Right. 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 Whitney Houston had pipes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just put that. Too bad no drain. All right. I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. You're all right. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, he took a bath on that one. Right. <laughs> okay. Did she die in the bath? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> what the hell? She died in Bed Bath & Beyond. It was a horrible tragedy. <laughs> I've, always, I've told this story before, but I remember the night she died, I was uh, playing this club in Knoxville, opening for a guy. Side splitters? Yeah, yeah. back in the day. And... Uh, it was the same night Jeremy Lin went for 38 against the Lakers. <laughs> and every, every tweet was just, Lin Sanity, Lin Sanity. And someone tweeted, Whitney Houston died. That's Lin Sane. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, my God. Man. Yeah, Ooh. that Lin Sanity was nuts. He just was like a one-month phenomenon. It was, was unbelievable. Mad, it was he, Asian hype. He yeah. was awesome. It was cool. Asian sensation. Yeah, you guys got a good team now. The Knicks, you guys got something to be excited about. My Warriors are done. It's time for a new... Uh... Yeah, but Steph in the Olympics was fucking... That terrible. was crazy. That, that just added crazy. to his legacy. Yeah! Yeah, so cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. He's a badass. He's I a bad him. man. What, they were talking shit, so they, they stepped it up? I missed the beginning. Well, he... Uh, I mean, he... I think, you know, against uh, Jokic was Serbia, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was that the last? Was that the second final to last one? Second to last. Second to last. The free throw line talking a lot of shit. And I'm oh. like, wow, never, you never see Steph because he is so competitive. So you, but he's got that baby face. You don't yep. see him like that. The baby faced assassin. But That's he's right. Talking all this shit at the free throw line, hit both of them, ice the game. Yeah. But then that last game, he just, four in a row, they were all insane. The all contested shots. Unbelievable. And it's that crazy shot of LeBron and Durant just open, and mm -hmm. he's just like, fuck it. Uh, yeah. Drains it. Yep. Like, wow. Yep. I watched yep. the montage, and it was, it put like, classic music behind it and they made it in slow motion it was it was beautiful he's phenomenal yeah he's good for the sport man beautiful eyes is yeah. he mixed yeah uh, his mom is mixed and his dad is uh, is black skin black guy oh so the mom is the already mom is, mixed yeah pre-mixed pre -mixed, got yeah. it yeah so he's like a three-quarter mixy can we pull up the parents i want to do a little eugenics here <laughs> Etymology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Brown noise. Mom is an attractive woman. Well, yeah, Whoa, is, yeah. yeah. Hotmom.com. Whoa. Now, you guys Mama. did, was it, I remember seeing the draft when you guys didn't pick Steph Curry and all the- No, no, no. Oh, no. He, no. Went, he, it was, went, he went to pick He before. went before, but there was something that happened. I saw the fans ripping their jerseys off and stepping on them because they, I, or maybe that was the year. Well, the you guys passed on someone one year and they were pissed that it wasn't like- uh, That one wasn't our fault. I mean, the T Wolves drafted two point guards before him. He went like seventh. Yep. Mm. And the Timberwolves took two point guards ahead of him. Unbelievable. Who Steph Curry. Wow. I don't think anybody knew he'd be that. I mean, yeah. yeah. But he was fucking awesome in college. He was just at a tiny. He was a Davidson. Like yep. you don't know. Like a Davidson. Yeah. Joe Three. Zimmerman knew him in. Yeah. College. Really? Yeah. Pounds. Joe played golf in college. What? Yeah. Yeah. You see him hit that hole in one. That was pretty cool. He hit a hole in one on, on TV and yeah. A he's tournament. just a freak. Athlete. He's a freak. Oh, he could okay. probably retire basketball and be a pro golfer if he wants. Yeah. Really? Probably. He's that wow. good at sports. I mean, he's. Man, what is it? The basketball people love golf. It seems. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking of Jordan. Putting the yeah, ball in the hole, baby. Do, man. I think they love golf. You ever notice, yeah. too, like all people always want to be something else. Like I'm sure you guys get it. A lot of people want to be comics mm -hmm. or a lot of rappers want to be actors or a lot of actors want to be. Everyone wants to be something else. That's true. Not me. I yeah, like being good. a comic like and it. a white male. No, <laughs> but I Life like, is good, man. Yeah. I like uh, <laughs> people always say comics want to be rock stars. I'm like, I don't want to be a rock star. Some douche with tight leather pants on and long hair. I, yeah, I don't want to take that. myself seriously. Yeah. 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 Gotta, I like that I have that to fall on. back on. Yeah, what am I? Uh, I'm going to be uh, Steven Tyler out there with, ah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I like sitting at a bar telling that's a joke right. and making fun of fat people. Yeah, that's a superpower is, uh, I think, not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. I heard uh, PTA, Paul Thomas Anderson, I sound like a name dropper, but he said this. One uh, of my he, he's awesome. Uh he said, I don't take myself seriously, but I take my work very seriously. There you go. And that's it. That's I the think way that's to do the it. formula. There's that famous quote, I think it's Gustave Flaubert said, Be violent in your work and ordinary in your life. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one. Ooh, Chris Brown was the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's good. Be violent in your work. I just rewatched Magnolia. Fuck, it's good. Man. Yeah, it's good. Oh, Damn. so good. He doesn't miss, man. But that whole character that whole character thing of uh Philip Baker Hall is like, did you fuck our daughter? And he's like, I don't remember. Like, what is this, a Tim Robinson sketch? Uh, like, I don't know. I don't know if I fucked the kid. Yeah. Oh, What's man. his name in that is so likable? Um, oh, the the tall guy for the comedy guy. Walk oh, John, C. Well, John C. Riley. Nazi, yeah, he, Nazi Riley? John C. Yeah. Riley. Oh, Nazi Riley. He's awesome in it. <laughs> yeah, he's great in it. And the also, end, I don't like. I don't love what they did with the ending, but I, I the movie's incredible. Like it's. Yeah. Beautiful. And Tom it's like, Cruise is awesome, and the energy of the movie is like insane. It's yeah, like, yeah. yes. So it zooms in the the music and like the the, the, the cutting to all these. It's like clearly influenced by like Robert Altman. Yeah, you know, yeah. and like yeah, like bam, bam, bam. Yep, all these things yep, happening yep. at once. Boogie yeah, Nights did that too. He did a lot of this. I like that one even band. better. He did Boogie a lot. Of, is fucking yeah, what's phenomenal. his best movie? What's PTA's Boogie best Nights, movie? For sure. Boogie Nights for sure. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's his first one. That's one of the best movies ever. It's fucking incredible. Great movie. Mark Wahlberg's best. I, I, yeah, he. I just awesome. don't. I, I don't think you can top that. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think so either. But he's made some other great shit too. Oh yeah, Punch Drunk. That was good. Punch Drunk was really there be, good. There will be blood. Was good. Oh, that's there my will favorite. be blood. Was Over really Boogie good. Nights. Yeah, I just love that movie. But I saw Inherent Vice on a date, and boy, was that a shit show. Like a not a good movie. Didn't no, work? Yeah. no, just boring, and the yeah. date wasn't going great. I made a move. You, I got shut down. You're not rewatching There Will Be Blood like you're rewatching. Yeah, exactly. That's it's funny you say that. Because I always see it, I'm like, I want to watch it, but it's a it's a hard watch. I it's watch brutal, but it's still right. kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, Boogie Nights, not There Will Be Blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah. fun at all. <laughs> but man, what a movie. Saw that in the theater as well. How about uh, Tom Cruise and those tidy whities looking pretty good, huh? Man. He's doing a movie I heard in outer space. Can we look this up? He's doing a movie in outer space, truly he's in just orbit. He's trying what? to kill himself. Yeah, no, I know. At this point, he's just he's like, how am I going to kill myself with doing? It? Well, he jumped off the cliff in that one movie for real, right? In oh the yeah. Motorcycle. But is I think he's doing a movie in outer space, and he had to learn how to what? load the camera what? in outer space weightless because it's just him and the director in orbit shooting a movie, wow. and it's just the two of them. And I'm like, dude, he's the best movie star of all time. But if you really go to outer space and do a movie, just you and the director, how? 
do yeah. you top that? But just be gay already. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to do all this stuff to prove it. Yeah, what are yeah, we It's doing? so much easier to suck a cock than I know. learn this outer space <laughs> stuff. This is crazy. Well, you'll be in your right. Oh, is it, oh, maybe is this it? Oh, wait, what's you think say? he's definitely uh, gay? Doug Lyman, oh, wait. I think he's got, yeah, I, mean, I think he's hiding something. I mean, he's a Scientologist yeah. for all these years. Something's, uh, something's yeah, up. Yeah, something's going on. But look, I, I'm glad to have him as a as a. He is actor. a great movie star. Great movie. He's Come the on. movie star. He's the movie star. Yeah. There's not that many left. He's yeah, the... Top Gun. You know, he, he wouldn't take his uh, Taiwan patch off on Top Gun, and China's like, we're not going to take the movie if you don't take that patch off. And he goes, leave it. So they probably lost out on billions of dollars wow. to China, but he's wow. He wanted to keep the patch. Wow, Patch Adams. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so stupid. I love it. Good to have you back. It's good to be back, man. Woo. So what are we doing? Nicotine patch. By the way, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where like you could just do. You know the technology they have in films. You can just shoot this and no one. You could just say you went to outer space and didn't go. And right, I know. I exactly. fucking know. Yeah, yeah. Gravity looked great. It's great. It won, it won Oscars. It's yeah, almost. It's almost good. fucked up. You're like costing some people work. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's just oh, going yeah. to space. There's but, no crew uh, out there, and yeah. there's no location scouting either. He's just in space. You don't have to pay for the uh, the building. Probably cheaper to go to space to shoot movies. To be honest. Now, how long do we get the first porno in space? Ooh, that's coming. The cum shot's gonna be off. Yeah. Like, just gonna hang up there. Yeah. <laughs> how do they go to the, when they go to the bathroom up there? Does it does it go out into space? I got the title. Black holes. <laughs> All right. uh, Ooh, baby, nice. Wait, yeah, when a they mission take, to Mars. Wait, a vacuum. Oh, go, it goes into the bathroom, toilets, funnel peeing and pooping. The bathrooms have thresholds to keep them. Oh wow, you get it sucks them to the toilet so they don't float away. Wow. Oh, so they 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 figured this out. Okay. Wow. I mean, you think these pilot? What, what was that Boeing? Those two astronauts are stuck till twenty twenty five. You see that? Wait, they're stuck in outer space? Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's supposed to be yeah, an eight-day eight trip. That's eight months away, six months away. Yeah, but it's supposed to be an eight-day trip. Oh, fuck. So they don't have enough food. What the longest delay of all time. Stuck in space with just 96 hours of oxygen on a Boeing oh, Starliner Express. Holy shit. Are they going to die? Hope Doesn't so. sound great. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I was on the phone with Delta yesterday just complaining about a flight. And, yeah. And Anthony just sees me on the street because he was picking me up for a road gig. You see on the street go, well, you better fucking figure it out. And I'm just holding Winnie. Ah. <laughs> like, you look like the fucking craziest angry person just screaming at someone on the phone. Does she get mad when you're mad? Is she like... She's always mad. Look at her. Yeah, my I got to give a shout out to my buddy. During the crowd strike, you remember that whole thing for a week where they were canceling every flight? And uh -huh. The system went down. He got fucked. He, had to, he was stuck in Iowa for two days because his flights got screwed up. So he got a hotel. He had to get another flight. His flight home was three grand. So he's like, I'm getting money back from Delta. They're paying for all this. And I'm like, good luck. He's like, watch me. That was like three weeks ago. He just got paid. So well done. Well done. Did he have, wait, did it take him three weeks of calling every yes. day? Yeah, well, you have to do the like complaints. It's a whole thing. They, yeah. they don't do, I used to have a joke about this in old special. They're like, we don't do complaints. Uh -huh. It's a real thing. They uh -huh. don't. They have a complaint division that you can't call. So wow. you have to, they, they can email and they just count on you tiring. Is this all That's airlines or is. just Delta? I think it's probably all airlines. Uber too. Because I'm a Uber Delta guy. Call. I like Delta now. And I do I, too. Delta used to suck and now Delta's the jam. There are people getting raped in Ubers and Ubers like you can talk to a robot about yeah, it. Yeah, right. I thought you were going to say there's people getting raped in Delta flights. No, just on the fucking money. Yeah. yeah. The mileage. Comfort yeah. rape. Uh, <laughs> right. I when I came over here, actually, uh, I took the, a cab or Uber from Brooklyn to my boy's place, and then I took the train up here because um, I'm luckily at a level of fame where I I could be on the train. I, I don't know if I ever want to be like oh, yeah. Pete Davidson or Paris Hilton or Charlie Sheen. They can't take the train. No, I like taking the train. It's Same. like I'm a perfect level. Um, and I came out of the train on 34th and Broadway, and I just had a deja vu 30 years ago in 94 
moving to New York on a one-way ticket on Tower Air. Wow. Tower Air. And the belt buckle, I remember, I, was a Pan Am buckle, and my friend had like a TWA buckle on Tower Air, which wow. was like 150 bucks one way. Way better than Twin Tower Air. Yeah, right? <laughs> In 94, and I just had a flashback. Of, Holy shit, Tower, 30 years yeah. ago, I, my first it. time, it was a snowstorm, and, uh, that, and I came to New York on a one-way ticket. Wow. And then I remember going to see, like I'd go to the Sounds Tower like Burn, of like Bill, Burr, Bill Burr and Chappelle would be doing stand up yeah. at the wow. cellar for like 12 wow. people at one in the morning. No, they were nobodies. Unreal. It was New York was special back then, man. There I got to live here in the 90s. It was like, yeah. still felt like the 80s. It was still like pre Giuliani, Times Square, pimps and hookers, really? sex booths. Oh, man. Whoa. New York was wild. Whoa. I loved it. Yeah. Tower Air. Where are you coming from? Uh, San Francisco on a one way fucking flight. Baby, man. were you nervous? I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a was, cross country was, life change. Yeah, it was exciting. And I just, just move and, and I went and it stayed at a friend of a friend's apartment and we get there and the friend was like what you brought your boys and we like moved to New York and we're like sleeping on the floor of some dude who didn't want us in his apartment oh, classic and, you know, this is before internet cell phone like then you just had to figure it out like and then yeah. this is history here we are damn 30 fucking years ago I remember uh, oh, when I first moved here, getting out of the cab. The cab was $45. I was staying at my mom's friends in Brooklyn for the first couple nights because I didn't know anyone or whatever. And she hated this, too. You know, you're, you're barging on someone's New York life. People in New York are already scraping by. And then I'm like, hey, I'm 22, uh -huh. here to do stand-up comedy. But whatever. So all I had was 320s. And I remember giving it to the cabbie, and I went, uh, it's 45, I got 320s. He goes, all right. Thank you. And uh, I was like, huh. And he just took the money. And I was that was out of money then. That was all I had. That was it. Yeah. Cause I, I $15 worked, tip. I worked <laughs> at a restaurant. That's a, that's a fucking hilarious scene in the movie, though. Yoink. Yoinked me. And I he was like, well, you got a tip. But I was like, oh, I guess you got a tip. He could have given you a 10. It'd be nice. It's a big tip. Give him a fifteen dollar tip. I was, I was, I was a hayseed. I was a rube. I was a southern. You could tell. Tard. Yeah, you could feel it on me. You weren't fucking overalls. <laughs> a little straw in your mouth. <laughs> I got the bag with the stick on it. You know. Did you have an accent back then that you lost? No, nah, I never had there, one. Yeah. I grew up in this pretty in the city, so we okay. didn't really have one. We say y'all. Yeah. And we say, uh, we take our ths and do a d. How's your mom and them? Oh, That's yeah. a big New Orleans thing. Yeah, Louisiana, baby. Yeah. It Love got purchased. Louisiana. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but then I moved to Bush. Uh, no, I moved to Crown Heights. Landlord died of AIDS. Yeah. Got mugged immediately. And I lived as a Jewish side, Hasidic Jew, and a Caribbean black. <laughs> One uh, big highway going down the middle, and I lived on the black side. So all the black guys thought I was Jewish. And they were like, you're on the wrong side, motherfucker. And I'm like, actually, they don't want me either. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, oh, but you could pass as the Jew. I could pass, but they were like orthodox. Yeah. Come I'd to the pull, dark side. They'd pull up in their minivan and be like, get in, get in. And I was like, I'm not Jewish. And they'd slide that door closed and have a Nagila. I still remember Hannibal Burr said that bit about uh, how he didn't know what orthodox Jewish people were. So, he, <laughs> yeah. so he's like, he's like, why don't these Amish guys have blackberries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So true. They look obvious. Very similar. Yeah. I did a gig in Lancaster. You ever see the buggies, the horse and buggy out there, the Amish people? We're in, in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because they're at the Wawa. And they have, to them, Wawa is like, Wawa? like a 7-Eleven. Uh, yeah, but they could pay cash, right? There's, are they, they can't, can they use card? I don't think so. Yeah, because how would you pay it? But you can see them in there. It's like Disneyland. They're like, oh, my God, they got a fucking slushy machine. It's just this red yeah. glowing slush going on. Are they allowed on. to use it, the slushy machine? Oh, they were all, they were kids, so they were they were breaking the rules. Or do they, is it like, you know, Jews on Saturday, you have to have someone come yeah. over. <laughs> and they're like, they'll turn on the lights. Yeah. 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 What's the holiday call where you uh, they allow one guy to come into their village and bang all the women? Rumspringer? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that. That's where you. That's leave. where you leave. Yeah, yeah. This is okay. something else. Where and I'm like, how do you get that job? Wait, wait. I'll go to an Amish town and. Fuck and you everybody. bang the women? Yeah, because they're they're. I, all have you seen you. the women, dude? I don't know, dude. Uh, it's definitely full bush. Oh it's yeah. Got to be a hot one. It's got to be one. They don't have a Norelco down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking probably bush. One. I've seen Witness. Oh, that was, was, <laughs> was that a good one? Oh, it's a great movie. Great movie. Great movie. I should check that There's one out. That's a great movie. Old school. No, I read about that one. I heard it's good. There's a day where you go in, they let like random dudes go in and plow all the uh, the butter churning whores. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that beep I always hear on the pod, that's usually when it goes to a commercial that sounds like you're in a cave. 
<laughs> that was once because we weren't here. <laughs> I do it on my phone. Everybody's like, that's fine. And yeah. then I get a million comments. But, uh, <laughs> what are you, recording that on a potato, tin can? Yeah, what else? Anything else to plug, Simon? Anything? Uh, geez, not really, man. Just uh, uh, Blink Twice is out now. Go nice. check it out. Um, Greedy People's out now. and uh, Movies are back, baby. Yeah, movies are back, man. Go see a movie in the theater. It's such a fun thing to have yeah. a collective experience where you can't pause it and you can't, you know, you got to watch the whole fucking movie, man. Because mm. I know if I'm at home, with the remote and my phone oh this is interesting real quick we could uh th so i just learned this term secondary screens have you heard this so they are making f content on streamers called secondary screens meaning they know they can't compete with you on your phone at home so yeah. they're making it dumbed down so you don't have to pay attention to the whole storyline oh. <laughs> therefore the end of the art of making because uh, they know you're on your phone so they just make it dumb so you don't have to pay attention to every detail just the guy yelling oh I'm getting shot right now oh <laughs> fuck <laughs> right. secondary screens man okay. so yeah put your phone away go to a movie and enjoy it and have a collective experience I got to go see the uh, premiere of Blink Twice and people are yelling and cheering and it, it Man, it was great. I'm pumped. I can't wait to see it, man. Yeah, man, it came out great. It you're, got you're a certified place. fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, let's see. What, what, what are we looking at? Oh, 70. Oh, it went down to 78. It was yesterday. It was eight. I think 80 is certified fresh. And oh, shit. I think. You dropped a peg. Yeah, we dropped a couple. So everyone out there, go vote it up. Even if you haven't seen it, let's get fresh, baby. How about that Tatum? Huh? He's a hunk. He's a hunk, man. He's a really sweet guy, too. He had his uh, ice bath delivered down to Mexico. Whoa. So I'd go to his room and ice bath like Rogan style. Yeah. And he had it down in the jungle. I'd be like, hey, man, can I use your ice bath? And we'd do rounds. Because uh, he's he, on that. He can't take the subway, but he could have an ice bath delivered to Mexico. <laughs> how, how long you go in the ice bath? I, I do. Well, I, I don't know if this is true, but I hear that anything over three minutes doesn't matter. So you don't need to go for anything longer than three. So we would do three 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 minute rounds i got an adapter for my tub at home uh-huh so it's like it's not expensive but it's it makes it an ice bath it yeah it freezes the water wow it takes like three that's hours. a wreck and it's clunky as fuck oh wow. i'll tell that's you it's a wreck. wreck i had to use it a couple oh, you haven't times. used it yet no, i used it twice it, and look yeah. it woke me the hell up I, oh yeah first thing in the morning you gotta like set up the night before you just hop in there you're like all right this sucks but it's also awesome yeah my well, boy Jack. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I try to do the ice cold shower, but it's too easy to get in and out. You need the bath. You need, you need the, the full submerge. immersion. Yeah, if you're it just because if part of your body isn't getting in, it's worse yes. than getting all the way in. Yes. My buddy Jack owns the Russian bathhouse in the East Ooh, Village. I love that so spot. It's the fucking best. Plug. That's a good plug. Go to if you're good in New friend. York. Go to the and he's got the ice water now. Yeah. So you they just renovated it recently, so it's all nice and new because it was kind of funky for a while. Yeah. That's and true. now it's all renovated, go. and they got a good ice bath, and they got the three different hot rooms. I mean, I. I I love the Schwitz, man. It's great. I, I went, think it, I'm gonna go tomorrow. I went there with Tim Dillon once. Talk about a sight. Just this fat gay wow. guy, just like owning, holding court, and he's like snapping a twink with a towel. Yeah, quite, a, quite an image seeing him <laughs> yeah. in a nice bath or a, a Turkish bath. That's I awesome. love the Schwitz, man. Love it. Gotta sweat it out. Mark Schwitz. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, is that it? Yeah. Do we end on Schwitz? I guess. Should we end on Schwitz or should we end on something else? What? <laughs> <laughs> See how dumb that is? Oh, we got, we got Bodega Cat whiskey. Yeah. Uh, it's all over New York right now. Strip House is going to carry it. I can't wait. We got a new bottle will debut very soon. Is this the new bottle? No, no, that's no, the no, old that's bottle. The way new sexier. One's, new one's sexy. It looks cool. Can we? Do we have a picture? Thick with two C's. Uh, yeah, uh, I will be in uh, London September 18th. Whoa! Belfast awesome. September 22nd, the 24th in Dublin, the 25th in Paris. Then I will be uh, in Amsterdam. We had a show in Amsterdam and Paris, so please fill those up. Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm, uh, and then yeah, Cleveland is the next spot. Not till, <laughs> not till November. So I'm gonna add I'm gonna add something in October, but then big tour in January. So uh, keep your eyes open, samurel.com or just go to punchup.live slash samurel punchup.live slash Mark Norman and you could see uh, all our stuff then Mark where are you going to be man hey hey Orlando Florida bring Wor the kids worst flight in the biz easily the worst flight and I'm doing the hard rock which I'm sh I've heard are tough for comedy Fort Lauderdale Portland Oregon London Ontario Toronto we added a show Newport Rhode Island Monterey California Oakland Winnipeg uh, Edmonton Cleveland uh, come on out Fayetteville Wichita Kalamazoo Chicago Theater I told you the Larry David story. No, uh, I'll be I'll be quick. So I'm doing the Chicago theater at 7 p.m. I get a call from my agent. Weird request. 
Larry David wants to do the Chicago Theater same day. He wants 7 p.m. So can you move to 9? And I said, I'll move to 9, but I get to meet him. Really? And they said, wow. we can do that. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah. He's going to hate every minute of it, but uh, I'll get the photo. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. yeah that's when you get the photo. You get yeah. the photo. So, Damn, nice, uh, nice hardball. Yeah, Nine's yeah. A, what day of the week is it? It's a Friday. All right, nine's a harder spot. I agree. I might but have to come to that Oakland young. show. I that's might true. have to. When's the come Oakland, to the Oakland, when's the Oakland one? Scroll up there. Sloppy, yeah, I, that's, I grew up there. I want to go uh, bring my boys. They all love you. We should come to the Oakland one. It's not selling well. I think people there are having trouble with money, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a rough, uh, rough town. But I hear it's a legendary October theater. October 12th. It's beautiful theater. Uh-huh. <clears throat> All right. Well, yeah. Check it out, folks. Right, then watch. Uh, Everyone in Oakland, twice. go see him. Yeah. That's Thank right. You. Yeah. Mark thanks, Norm- boys. Punch Up. Follow us both on punchup.live slash Mark Norman, punchup.live slash Sam Morell. Go see Simon's, all his movies, Blink Twice. Thanks, all, guys. Uh, the new one's coming out. It's awesome. Crushing. It's such a good guest on the thanks, podcast. Thanks. Always man. a pleasure. And, thanks, uh, guys. Vince Vaughn, get your fat ass on here, yeah, you want you, dude. four-headed freak. Ba- love Bad Monkey, dude. It's, it's been great so far. And get some... Uh, Bodega Cat Whiskey, bodegacatwhiskey.com. We got a new fucking batch. It, we're making moves with this. So Whee! if you want if you want a piece of this shit, DM Bodega Cat on IG. I don't know what to do. Oh, that's a pet peeve. Oh, look at that. Ah, look at that. It's a real thing. That's, look at that. Bottle is strong and wow. sturdy. It really hit it's a person. Sexy. With. It's a sexy bottle. Sexy wow. bottle. That, that's a pet peeve. I'm out in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, you got a whiskey. You you guys should do uh, some uh, some like ready to drink. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do we're it. We're on it. All this shit takes time. Slow nah, down. No, they, they, they got the right idea, though. We're going to do it. I just smell your fart now. I just let a little oh, uh, <laughs> the uh, silent one, one dude. Sorry. And on that note, it's been a great episode. Got we it. love you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Sunday's the day for my neck bender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like a cop. Here in New Orleans, this woman doesn't look like I remember her.